make sure it happened correctly. Steve, um, the person who's interested in discussing 70, the traffic situation at 72nd and West End just asked for a link, I sent it to her. So um, she's later in the agenda, but at least she'll have the link now. Steve. Um, Hold on one sec. One sec. Andrew there? I'm here. Okay, what happens is when you start the uh, YouTube, you, I get a double thing, so. Oh, weird. So that's why. Okay, you're, you're, did you want me, to, was there something you wanted to say? Um, I, I already said it. Um, somebody who wanted to discuss the uh, 72nd and West End issue didn't have the link to the meeting. I copied it from the CB7 website and sent it to her. Okay. I need to do, make this one wider. Yeah, and Meg Schmidt needs to be promoted. Yeah, work, yes. Working on some quirky things that happened, hold on. It's a funny view. I'm sorry. We uh, we need to ask if somebody could please take the minutes this evening. Can we get a volunteer for that? What is going on here? I'm not able. No, I, I'm trying to get out of this view. Okay, I'll, I'll do it if nobody else. Didn't wants. you do it recently, Barbara? I did. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm trying to get folks that haven't done it recently, because I don't want you to have to feel like double duty here. You know, the committee should really take turns, don't you think? And everybody should take a turn, regardless. That's... I agree, Barbara. <clears throat> Something to work. I'm happy to do it, but I, I, I am backloaded for the next three days with work and I'll be, I can't do it this week, but I'll do it another time, I promise. Thank you. All right, so Howard, I'm going to make you a co-host now. Thank Sorry. you. A little bit of time. I had a weird view that took me a while. And thank God I had a 14-year-old son who could help me. Andrew, I'm going to make you a co-host as well, just so you know. That you now have co-host abilities and can do and promote anybody you want. We are Thanks. on YouTube. Uh, but um, we still need to get a volunteer for our minutes, if we could. Um, and Steve, how do you want, I, I noticed you sent an email recently that you would like the uh, attendance, the names of folks in the minutes. Um, as folks are going to be joining through the meeting, um, who will be keeping track of who joins? You want one of us to do that or the person who's taking minutes to watch the chat or, or watch the top of their screen or how do you want to work that? I'm, I was passing on a request from the office. The office had asked me to how we ever traditionally make present and I would continue on. But the only thing they asked after that is to comment on who was not present. It would be helpful. Sure. So I would just do what we've always done. I don't think you should change anything other than whoever takes the minutes, however we want. I assume the person who takes the minutes knows how to touch participants at the top of the, or bottom of their screen and see who's who of the uh, committee members are here? Uh, Steve, as, as, Steve, as part of the procedures that we do, we can always, uh, after uh, the day after the meeting, send the list of uh, who came to uh, whoever is doing the minutes. Oh, that would be great. Thanks, Christian. Okay, great. Christian, you're not in the Caribbean today. <laughs> <laughs> I had a couple of uh, uh, national parks uh, backgrounds. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm handing it, just so you know, Howard and Andrew, I'm handing the technology to you guys. If you want my help, let me know, but I'll defer to you Thanks. guys. When you want to. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Um, Howard, uh, we need a volunteer to get, to take the minutes tonight. If somebody could please do that before we begin, it would really be helpful. Um, well, I'm already, kind enough to volunteer but she did it in, she did it in December I believe that's 
kind of ridiculous to make someone do it twice, but. I did December. I know Barbara also did recently, but FYI. I did. Yeah, right. That's right, Meg. That's right. I think uh, Ken, it was Ken did, did January. Yes, Ken, uh, Ken did recently too, sure. And Meg did December. Barbara did November then, okay. But let's see, who do we have? We have, we have Doug, we have Elizabeth, we have Jay, we have Julian. I'm happy to do it. I just have to be, unfortunately I have a commitment around 8.15. So if, if I think, I think this call might go longer than that. So I think it might too. I'm happy um, to, I'm happy to do it for the first hour and 45 minutes. Um, I, I, I don't, thank you so much for that, Elizabeth. Um, I think we need someone to do the whole thing because for someone to pick it up and then to have to coordinate the two sets is, is, is not optimal. Uh, let's see. Carolyn says she can take over after that. Let's I mean, try. yeah, I can just do it or I could take over from Elizabeth if we want to do like a Google doc, but either way. Um, whatever works, I would thank both of you. And I can um, do it. Next month. <clears throat> but I have to leave early. Yeah, that was the that was the issue with Elizabeth. So Elizabeth can do her part, and then Sarah, you could take over. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna do it in in a um like a word document, and then I guess Sarah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can just. I'm, send not working, I'm not working off of the laptop I usually work off of, so. Um, okay. You want to just send like when you need to go, you can just send me it and just. Yeah, or there's like you can take you can just like do your notes and then we can yep. pull them together and send them to Andrew. Cool. So, Thank you awesome. so much for that. Thanks. So, um, like let's get started. It. Yep, let's get started. It's our, uh, believe it or not, it's our February Transportation Committee of Community Board 7. Andrew Albert and Howard Yaris were co-chairs. Um, I believe the chair of our community board, Steve Brown is on here as well. Um, we are very fortunate uh, this evening to have Leah Flax with us from uh, Government and Community Relations at New York City Transit. Many people have inquired about the cleaning that is going on. Most folks who are riding the subways believe they have never looked as clean as they do now. Many places are sparkling. Um, they are done, both the subway cars, the buses, the stations, the commuter rail stations are done multiple times. There are some new technologies being tested and uh, all of this is is, is being done to make people not only feel safe, but to actually be safe. And uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Leah and uh, Leah's gonna tell us the process by which um, the trains and stations uh, and buses are cleaned each and every evening. As you know, the system, the subways are closed between one and 5 a.m. And uh, the MTA has brought on a host of additional cleaners to make sure all of these facilities are kept as, as clean as possible and to minimize the spread of any COVID and other germs. So Leah, please take it away and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for that um, introduction. I'm really happy to be joining your meeting today. I think it's my first time presenting to your committee. Um, so thank you very much for having me. Thank you. I did prepare a presentation and, but it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Um, I think we can we can enable that. Um, if one of the if Christian or uh, or somebody can enable the screen sharing, so Leah can share her presentation. I think she can probably share her own screen. That's what John just told me. Oh, it's working now. Thank you. Great. Okay. So. This should work. And view slide. It's working. Yep. Uh, of course, that's not the first slide, but. Right. Uh, <laughs> okay, so you can see it, right? Yes. Okay, excellent. And my plan was just to go through it and then hear what questions you have. Does that, is that how you usually? That's, that's fine. Okay, wonderful. Um, so as Commissioner Albert was saying, we are doing a lot of new and different cleaning um, to address COVID-19. And we're really doing that for the safety of all of our customers and especially essential workers and our employees. 
um, what guides that work? How do we know uh, what kind of cleaning to do? We follow federal and state guidance. So in particular, uh, the CDC, the Federal Transit Administration, OSHA for our employee facilities, and State Department of Health guidance. In terms of cleaning of surfaces, all of that guidance right now is uh, recommending that we can clean surfaces, especially high touch surfaces once a day, or some say routinely. Um, and that's what's really guiding our approach uh, and processes. So at a high level, what are we doing? We're cleaning all 4,700 buses, 5,300 subway cars, and 472 stations every day. Some of them more than once a day, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, to enable all this cleaning and disinfecting is really a 24-7 operation. Um, and we are using disinfectants that have been approved by the US EPA for fighting SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus which causes COVID-19. And they have a list of approved uh, disinfectants for COVID-19 and that's called the EPA list N. So you'll see me refer to that. That's what we're using um, to make sure that the disinfectants we use are gonna be effective. Um, and we've, we've learned a lot, we've set our processes in place, but we are continuing to test new technologies to try and figure out how we can clean and disinfect better and more efficiently. So just to go a little bit deeper um, on our different parts of our system. Our subway train cars, we have 5,300 of them. Um, it was, it's great to hear uh, Commissioner Albert mentioning that folks have noticed how much cleaner um, our train cars are. That's really wonderful to hear. So uh, one of the reasons that might be is because we're cleaning them every 24 hours. And that's a, a much shorter time frame than what we were doing before, which was every 72 hours pre-pandemic. So to, to do all that extra cleaning, um, we've really had to increase the number of cleaners system-wide. Um, and they're doing cleaning both during the day at terminals and in the yard and at night at terminals and in the yard. And by terminals, I mean the end of line subway stations. So I don't, there wouldn't be any in uh, Community Bird 7, but um, you know, 100, 35th Street on the three line or 145th Street or- um, Or 148th Street. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, or up in Inwood, those would be our terminal stations where you would see the cleaners. Um, so maybe in your travels, you have seen some of them uh, cleaning subway trains. So they're particularly focused on cleaning and disinfecting high touch areas, in particular seats, grab bars, and they're also um, wiping down uh, the intake air grills and conditioner, con the air conditioner diffusers. Um, as I mentioned, we're doing this in the yards for the trains that are out of service and in stations for trains that are in service. So those trains get cleaned and then they go back into service immediately. Um, and the overnight 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. suspension of service really helps us facilitate a thorough cleaning um, of the train cars because you cannot do that cleaning when there are people in the cars. Um, and I also want to mention that we have, we're now replacing the subway air filters every 36 days and it was previously every 72 days. So as for our stations, they actually get cleaned and disinfected twice per day. And by the way, these are minimums. So some of our train cars are even getting cleaned more than once a day, but at a minimum, they're getting cleaned once a day. And so for our subway stations, that's a minimum of twice a day. Um, so what do we use? And this is honestly similar to train stations. We're using 
electrostatic sprayers, uh, wipes, regular spray bottles, um, and again, only these disinfectants that have been approved by the EPA on list N. Um, they're focusing on high touch areas, such as our 3,708 turnstiles, um, our station booth exteriors where, you know, people talk to station agents, our MetroCard vending machines and things like that. Um, and the cleaning at stations also includes our employee facilities. We have a lot of employee facilities within station footprints. On buses, uh, the cleaning is again daily, and that takes place at depots, which is where buses are traditionally cleaned. Um, buses go back to the depots for refueling and cleaning traditionally. So we've just cha really changed the cleaning routine and in intensity at the depots. And again, they're using these electrostatic sprayers. Um, that's a picture, the middle picture is an electrostatic sprayer. And that really just helps diffuse the, um, the different, the particles of the disinfectant and it charges them so that it really gets all over every surface much more effectively than you know, a normal spray bottle. That's something that we began testing at the beginning of the pandemic, proved very effective. And we really are, are using it across everything, buses, trains, um, but they're particularly, we don't use them as much in stations where there are people around. Um, and I also want to mention that we're also uh, doing this cleaning regimen for our paratransit vehicles. So all vehicles are disinfected daily for the dedicated AAR vehicles, that's the traditional blue and white. Um, those are cleaned by our um, our service providers and for our broker service, that would be the taxi cabs and livery vehicles. Those are, uh, all those vehicles have to be in compliance with the taxi and limousine commission rules and that's insured by uh, the broker services that we contract with. That's how we clean our specific um, vehicles and our stations. And I also just wanted to mention um, you know, some of the feedback that we're getting is that the vast majority of customers, it does make them feel safe when they're using mass transit. And we have gotten a lot of really positive feedback from the riding public and our customers on it. And that we're continuing to test new ways to clean and more efficient ways to clean. And we're doing that in particular with our federal partners and our academic partners. Um, so this sort of gets into detail, but some things are, that you might've heard about are um, biostats. So that's after you've disinfected, you put that down and it prevents um, microbes from growing. So we know they work on microbes, but they don't know really, do they work on viruses? Um, another thing is UV lights. That's a proven technology that's used in hospitals, but we haven't, so we know that it can kill viruses but it's a, it has some operational challenges. Um, we haven't really been able to use them in vehicles, but we're still working um, with the EPA to see if we could use them in other parts of our system. We're still looking at different upgrades to the air filtration system. And we're under, also undertaking um, studies with the US Department of Homeland Security, uh, US Department of Energy, EPA, um, to look more at how can aerosol uh, dispersion of the virus, how does it travel in transit and what are ways that we can uh, mitigate its spread? So that is what I wanted to, to share and really summarizes the new and different cleaning that we've been doing under the pandemic. Um, and would love to hear any questions you have. That's great, Leah. Thank yeah, you so thanks. much for that. Um, I have a couple of, of things I want to, before we open up the questions, um, maybe you can answer. Um, we've heard from, uh, I've heard in other meetings from Mark Dowd, the chief innovation officer about some new electrostatically charged air filtering that's being pioneered on the Long Island Railroad and Metro North. Do you have any knowledge yet about how this, I've heard it's, it's going well, but have you gotten any further information? That would be a game changer, I think. 
you know, I didn't uh, really cover the railroads um, and I okay. hadn't heard about that. So it's the same. I mean, Electrozac is we're using them for the spares. I didn't know about the filters, but I can circle back to you on it. All right, great. And um, some folks, some writers have asked, have wondered if because of all of this cleaning and how important it is to keeping people safe and feeling safe, has there been any thought to having um, something either on mta.info or on, on, on uh, Subway Time or on another app that people use that could tell them the last time a station was cleaned or a particular car was cleaned? Any thoughts to that? That's a really interesting idea. So like a, some sort of dashboard where you could yep. know your specific. Um, I don't believe that's something that is currently in the works, but it's a really um, interesting idea. Okay, thanks. Um, let's see if we have other questions for Leah. Uh, can Rich. I, can I just uh, perhaps Leah take her, uh, her... Oh yeah, maybe you can take the presentation off and that oh. way we can... Thanks, Leah. Should be easy, right? <laughs> there we go. Um, I see uh, Rich Robbins' hand is up. Go ahead, Rich. Yeah, thank you. Um, and great presentation, Leah. And thank you so much for all the work you're doing. Um, I thought Andrew brought up a really interesting point in introducing you, which is that there are two issues here. One is uh, safety. The other is perception of safety. And I'm wondering how what you're doing has changed just as the science and the understanding of the disease has changed. And also if there might be um, some ways that cleaning might be scaled back and cost might be saved, but that might impact the perception of safety and how much that's a factor in deciding what, uh, what cleaning efforts are done. Yeah, I think, um, you know, absolutely that cleaning contributes to both safety and the perception of safety. The, the guidance that we are continuing to follow is that um, the guidance is continuing to be that we should still be cleaning surfaces. And that applies to facilities and public transit and public places. So we are continuing to follow that guidance as being uh, important to safety. And I think um, at what point we will know to what extent it could be scaled back. Um, I think we're just, we're not there yet. And we're at this point still just following the guidance that we should be doing it and that it is important in stopping the spread of the virus. Great, thank you. Uh, I see Barbara Adler's hand is up. Go ahead, Barbara. Uh, Leah, I also just really wanted to thank you. This is an this was an amazing and very interesting presentation. So thank you for that. Um, and my one question was, um, how many staff members are there actually working on cleaning all of these things? I have to get back to you on the number of staff members. We also have um, contractors doing the cleaning. When um, it first came out that we would be clean, we made the decision to be cleaning things every 24 hours. We simply didn't have the staff uh, to do it, especially with staff going out sick. Um, and so we also had to bring on contractors, but I can get back to you with a number of uh, folks. Okay, it just seems like an overwhelming task to do every day. So I'm, I'm glad you're it, doing it's it. It's incredible, it really is. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, well, let's go, we have others. Doug, Doug, go ahead, Doug. Yeah, this is not as much of a question on cleaning and, and, and Leah, I echo the sentiment. Thank you, great presentation and great to see you here. Uh, I just happen to notice that when I'm on a, a subway car or a bus, sometimes windows are open, sometimes they're not. Some, it looks like, I'm not sure if staff is doing it or passengers are doing it. I don't know if it's something that passengers should or shouldn't do. I notice also the hatch in buses in the rear, the emergency hatch, weather permitting, sometimes is open. I personally feel safer when that's open, but I just, was there any, um, uh, you know, feedback on that is that are these windows supposed to be open? Can passengers access them? Is it counterproductive to the filtering? I don't know if there is um, a directive that we want them open or not. So I'll have to get back to you on it. I've noticed that as well, Doug. Uh, some folks do open windows thinking that's making them safer. Um, Elizabeth. 
I'm here. Sorry, I'm taking notes as I'm writing, so that's why I'm not on camera right now. Um, no, thank no. you again. I echo what everyone else has said. My question is just what a lot of people are are sort of asking, and and I heard tonight um, the importance of that one to five a.m. Um, time frame. Do you have a sense of when or how um, the trains will come back to 24 hour service? Um, and, and it sounds like the reason that they're not is obviously for the reasons you described, but um, just wanted to see if you had any thoughts on that. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, and we are gonna have to continue with the suspension of service while the pandemic is ongoing. Um, and right now there's not an estimate of uh, when it will be over and we'll be able to return it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. And we have um, Mark Diller. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you. And thank you for the presentation. I add my, my voice to the chorus. Um, the uh, question I had, we, we had a presentation at a different committee uh, a couple of weeks ago um, about the test and trace uh, protocols. And I'm wondering if we can connect the dots. Um, has test and trace provided statistics about uh, the uh, presumed number of instances of, of being infected uh, by virtue of exposure on the trains? Um, and I'm wondering how that correlates to all these wonderful cleaning efforts. And you know, is, is it surface or is it transmission or is it some other kind of transmission? I apologize, but I'm not familiar with test and trace or their findings. So I don't know if, if that was, if you thought someone else on here might know. Thanks. Uh, okay, and let's see, we have, uh, Steve, you have a couple of questions, right? Yeah, I wanted to wait till everyone had answered, which I'm fine. Oh, you want me to take the uh, public as well first then? Uh, that, I mean, that, it, why don't I ask a couple and then we'll do the public. Go ahead. Um, so thank you so much. And the reason I have a couple is, as Andrew knows, I've been requesting this for a long time. So I'm rather excited. Um, and particularly that my son, besides myself, someone my son takes the subway often uh, around the city. So we're all concerned. You know, he's, I'm not concerned in general, but that pricks my interest. Um, a couple things. I was curious if if there was any data, any just any third party data, has, has anybody looked at or evaluated sort of the, the, I think we all feel good about it, but has there ever been any studies or any anything in the last year that validates sort of the safety, particularly of the subways or the buses would be one question. Um, and the second question I was gonna ask is, um, what are you got? I mean, my understanding is, is that from a safety perspective, the original concern about surfaces has diminished and that that is not as important from the CDC. I'm curious if you can comment on or any direction that you guys are having, but it's my understanding that, again, that, that's what we're hearing is it's more about the airborne and less about those early concerns that it was sitting on surfaces. Anything you can answer in those two would be great. Yeah, on the last one, you know, we work very closely with the CDC and the EPA to get guidance from them. And that is what they're saying that is more from airborne than surface transmission. But then they are saying, but you should still clean surfaces because if somebody who's infected sneezes directly on something and then you touch it, that is a way that it could still be transmitted. So even though, um, you know, I think they know a lot more now about surface transmission than they did at the start, their recommendation is still to continue cleaning um, surfaces. So that's the guidance that we're following. And just, is, is there any, has there been any studies or early study results or any third party data just on the, the cleansiness and the safety of the public, uh, of, of, of the subway or the buses or anything? I think that there have been some studies and that in general, um, that they're pointing to riding on transit being safe. Um, there haven't been these, a lot of incidents, known incidents where people contracted it from riding on public transit. But, you know, there's, it's, I mean, just in terms of transit, in terms of everything with COVID, to find a definitive study, uh, it's hard. It doesn't, you know, these are small studies. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that they're, I don't, I don't know that I have the, can point you to like maybe the study you're looking for. 
Okay. Again, I was just general curious if things have been rolled out. And then in a completely other direction, look, we clearly it's important that people start to take more public transportation, particularly for the economics of it. So I'm curious, have there been any conversations of public service announcements or, or a way to, to really get word out that the, that the, all the work you're doing um, may not be your department, but I'm just curious if you heard anything about it because clearly economically speaking, we need to get people taking public, you know, we need it for multiple reasons, but for a little bit for that as well. Yeah, I think, you know, at transit, what we're doing is really just trying to make sure that it's as safe as possible and people feel as safe as possible. So something we I didn't cover here, um, but it's really important is our mask enforcement. Um, and one thing, I'll just do a little plug that we do every month. I mean, we have public um, messaging about wearing masks. We have visual messaging, audio messaging. We've gotten some celebrities to do some of those audio recordings, but we also, we really wanna make people um, feel safe and Every month we go out and do mask giveaways with our mask force. We ride the trains and the subways. Um, we're doing it this month on Thursday, February 25th. And it's members of the public can also volunteer and participate. So um, you're free, welcome to join us. There's a link to sign up. It's not out yet, but I'll make sure, sure to share it with you guys um, this week when it, when it comes out. But really just, um, making sure that people feel safe is the number one way um, that we are trying to encourage safe transit riding. Thank you. Hey, anything else, uh, Steve? Otherwise I'll start to take some public questions. Uh, Ellen, go ahead, if you can unmute. Hi there, thank you. Um, I'm sorry I joined late, but I got home from being on the subway. <laughs> um, so Hopefully it wasn't late. No, it, well, actually, the trains have been pretty, pretty good about yes. that. My big question about the uh, trains in general is enforcement. Um, you know, everybody can have their hearts in the right place. You can make all the rules and regulations. Um, but since I ride the subway a fair amount, I can speak from personal experience that there is no avenue for enforcement. If you see something wrong, when you're riding the train, there's nothing to do. And here are some of the things that I see happening that impact safety as much as cleanliness, certainly. Um, people eat on the subway and they, you can't eat without taking your mask off. And since we have this sort of this precedent of if you're outdoors uh, at a restaurant, it's okay to take your mask off and eat in public. That seems to be licensed to do it in a subway. It's a serious problem. I see it all the time. People are smoking in the subway. Um, we don't dare say anything to anybody. Um, I had one incident recently where a guy was going berserk. He wasn't wearing a mask. I mean, there's a lot of crazy people on the subway. Uh, I know we're all going a little crazy these days. Um, but you know, a guy who's going crazy, he's not wearing a mask. I actually, when I got off and I found the conductor, he was leaning out the window and I reported it. And what, what can he do? Is he supposed to stop the train and go find the guy? There's, there's nothing to do. So I think enforcement is really a serious problem. Um, there, there was one other thing that I've known, oh, panhandling on the subways. Um, the panhandlers are coming through, they're, they're back. The panhandlers are back. And again, my heart goes out to them, um, but you know what? They come through, they're not wearing masks. They're very aggressive um, and you're trapped in a car. And where do you go? So all of these issues come down to enforcement. So I'd love to hear Leah speak a little bit about enforcement. Sure. Well, thank you um, for sharing. And I'm glad that your train was on time today, but also that you're experiencing uh, these other problems. And on enforcement, um, it, it, we partner with NYPD and they are in charge of enforcement. Um, and we really need our train conductors and our bus operators to be operating the vehicles. Our cleaners are, are not responsible for enforcement. Um, and it's really through partnering with NYPD 
that uh, that enforcement can be done. Yes, and we we uh, we all are trying to get more NYPD for a host of reasons. Um, some of these terrible crimes you've seen publicized. Um, we'd like to see. Um, We'd like to see police officers at the booths because some of the people perpetrating these crimes are not actually paying their fare. So if we can stop it at the booths, we've stopped it at the platforms, people will feel and be safer. Um, we have more police than we did earlier during the uh, period of protests when many of the transit police were out helping other officers in the streets, but they have returned to the system and we hope to be getting more. It's, it's, a, it's a definite concern and thank you for that question, Ellen. Um, Jonathan, you have a question. If you can unmute. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Awesome. Evening, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for the presentation. Uh, I just wanted to say before I ask my question, if, um, you know, I really appreciate the work the MTA is doing to keep everyone safe. Um, I've been taking the subway since May, although I'm out of the city right now. But uh, by and large, it's pretty fine. Same as usual. Uh, so I just wanted to ask, because there's been a lot of reports recently about um, how during the shutdown period, the uh, MTA is spending a lot of time necessarily having to just move around trains because uh, the yard space isn't sufficient. Um, and I just wanted to ask if the, uh, like what the MTA's perspective on that in terms of like renewing, uh, resuming overnight services, especially um, as vaccine hubs roll out and a lot of those are pretty close to uh, transit hubs and we want to try and be vaccinating people 24-7. So yeah, I'm sorry, that was kind of rambling. I basically just want to know uh, what the MTA's perspective on is, is on renew, resuming overnight service with the idea in mind that most of those trains could probably be revenue trains as it is. Thanks for your question. Um, I'm not familiar with the issue of trains getting backed up um, at the yard, so I can't um, speak to that. And you know, we are coordinating with the different vaccination sites and especially the 24 seven sites. Um, and we do offer a number of, we offer overnight bus service as well as some additional overnight bus routes. Um, and so certainly we'll be continuing to look at that, um, what kind of bus transit service are serving these sites to make sure that people can get to their appointments. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little ironic that we are establishing 24 seven vaccination centers, but the, the subways aren't running 24 seven at this time. So I hope you will look at that because uh, I think that's important. And of course, if restaurants get extended to midnight at some point, their workers don't leave immediately and might be ready to go home at one or 1.30 and that would you know, stifle the economy and New York come back. So all of this has to be weighed, I, I get it. Um, I think Rich has another question, and then uh, I guess, uh, Leah, we should let you go. Um, Rich. Sorry, I don't, my hand was never lowered. Oh, that's all it was. Okay, so you don't have another question. I will lower the hands. Okay. Um, Leah, thank you so much for being with us tonight, and uh, stay well, and um, let us know uh, if you have, you can communicate with me on uh, the questions that um, that were asked that you didn't have an answer to, and I will get the answers to folks. Great. Thank you so much for having me and for the excellent questions and for everyone's continued support of public transit. We appreciate it. Thank Thanks, you. Leah. Thank you, Leah. Thank you. Howard, you're on. Oh, I'm on? <laughs> well, actually, it's Ken who's on. We have a, um, a concern. We all have a concern with um, the fact that left-hand turns have caused more uh, crashes and injuries and a few deaths in our community. And so Ken has proposed a resolution to try to mitigate some of that harm. So um, I will let Ken, I'll turn it over to Ken. Okay, um, first of all, I, <clears throat> I, I just wanted to uh, mark the fact that um, Rich is no longer a member of this committee. I'm not sure everybody knows that. Um, and Rich has been on the committee since he joined the board in 2014. And in those seven years, he's made incredibly valuable contributions to our work. And I just wanted to go through a few of those. Um, first, he initiated a truly 
data-driven approach to setting our committee's priorities and was an amazing and dependable resource for crash data in our district. Rich also formed important alliances with the commanding officers of our, both our precincts, working especially productively with Deputy Inspector Mallon in the 20th. And uh, he was key to uh, making the precincts part of our meetings as never before. And Rich was our, as we all know, our committees and our board's tech master. And he pioneered the live streaming many years ago of our committee's meetings. And that led to the live streaming of the full board. Uh, Rich has been a key player on this team. And I think we owe him a huge debt of gratitude for his hard work and his dedication. Thank you, Rich. Well said. Um, so everybody got a copy of the um, uh, resolution, uh, I hope. <laughs> um, yes. And, uh, and well, everybody on the committee got it. Um, Susan's shaking her head. Um, I didn't either. Yeah, I don't think I have it either, sorry. Oh, it wasn't sent to every committee member? I, uh, I believe I believe it was. Um, I believe it was, yes. It was like two weeks ago, maybe? Weekend? Yes, it was on January 29th, I believe, actually. And Barbara had some feedback, there was a little back and forth. Yeah. Um, uh, who doesn't have it in front of them? Maybe uh, we could post it, otherwise I can email it um, to folks. I think it's a good idea to post resolutions on the screen if we can. And that way um, everyone knows what we're looking at and what uh, the community is. Yes, um, who can do that? I, I think it's- All panelists can do it now. I, I can do it. Ken has it, he can post it. If Howard has it, he can do this. Andrew, uh, I would- I'll do, I'll do it, okay. Perhaps behind the scenes, if you just want to send it to um, all of the community, you know, as many people I as can't you can do it. We'll sort of multitask on this. Here, I got it. I actually did get the email from then. It, it, I did see it get out to most people. Sometimes we don't see it, but Howard and or, or it says disabled participant screen sharing. Uh, there it oh, is. There it is. I just put up the um, therefore clauses. So. I stand corrected. I did receive this. <laughs> I thought so. Yeah, I thought everybody did. Um, so comments? Uh, so everybody ready to vote? <laughs> <laughs> It's an important resolution. It's been a big problem. Um, if, if it's not big enough for people, you can actually, if you have a touch screen, you can, uh, you can make it larger by just using your fingers and enlarging the text. Ken, I have a, a question about this. Um, I, I absolutely believe that the split phase um, should be, you know, wherever we can put it on left-hand turns and especially at our, uh, uh, the intersections that have had the most, uh, the most accidents or crashes or, or collisions. Um, but to absolutely ban left turns, I think would, I, I think that's a little overboard if, if you don't want trucks and emergency vehicles to have to go three blocks around and back to get to a particular block. But I think asking for split phases at every left at every left turn, or and certainly at the worst uh, intersections, makes perfect sense. Andrew, can I ask a question? Sure. If, if emergency vehicles need to make a left turn, a, a, a ambulance or a police car or a, um, a, a fire engine, are they allowed to? I'm, yeah. I, I believe they're not going to get in trouble if they do it. If, <laughs> if it's a life or death situation. No, no. I'm, but are they allowed? Are they? You know, is there like a code that they're permitted to? I believe that they're allowed to make left turns. There's nothing yeah. to prevent now. I Just like they can go through red lights. Oh well, yeah, during yeah. Yeah. an emergency call, not not not, right. not obviously. 
I mean, if they're just driving around, they'd have to go the three blocks. But if they were on a call and someone was, you know, in serious, there was oh, a fire. They can absolutely do it, Roberta. Absolutely. Yes. So, I don't think it's a problem because- Yeah, legal, have... um, legally, um, generally city emergency vehicles are permitted as, as Ken said. They but let me use right another right. example. What about an accessory? As long as, as, or long as their emergency signals, lights, sirens are in use, sure. uh, they, they have the right of way. They can go through red lights. Uh, they could, uh, if a left turn was, was restricted and they had to take one, they can do it legally. But that's, that's um, a hypothetical. What this resolution calls for, as I read it, it's to restrict or eliminate when possible. So it's not calling for a blanket elimination of left-hand turns. It's calling for either restricting as discussed further in the re resolution or when possible an elimination. So it's, it's, it's not a categorical elimination of left-hand turns. That's also, it, any emergency vehicle would certainly be able to make a left turn. Oh, I knew that. And it, it's not as though DOT doesn't already do this. We've all seen no left turn signs at various exactly. intersections. Um, this is just saying maybe you could, there's some places you could, uh, additional places where you could either restrict in terms of the hours when they're allowed or, or eliminate. Um, UPS asked their drivers to never make a left turn if they can. That's avoid. right. And, and, and only and actually, and actually, it is not. It has actually helped their business and not harmed it because the drivers figure out the route that's going to work for them. It, yeah, they yeah. claim it saves them ten mil, million uh, gallons exactly. of gas a year. Ken, I, I believe this wording, and I'm looking at it right now, that says all Broadway intersections. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. just cannot imagine that that's possible. Could we see the rest of this resolution, please? Uh, just uh, Andrew, I think, I think part of the difficulty is the word possible is, is so broad based and, yeah. and definitive. May, maybe you could just say where, um, you know, eliminate or, or restrict left turns uh, wherever practical. Or appropriate or where appropriate, instead of just possible. It's always possible. Right, right. So yeah, I think appropriate or practical or practicable or- And practical. just to be on record, we have, we have asked DOT, and I believe Colleen is on the call, um, we have asked many years to have a stop, you know, wait for, wait for green like Park Avenue has, and we've been told that the, you know, the width of the mall in Broadway is not as wide as the width on Park Avenue. And that's why Park Avenue has those signs and we can't get them. But we've also been told if we ask for 10 or 12 or even 15 of the worst, most accident prone intersections, we could get those signs. And I'm, ho I'm hopeful that we can get those signs so that people don't think they can make a left turn at Broadway and southbound Broadway at 88th, for instance, and just go right through. Right, correct. Yes. I'll join in because it's at this particular point, and this is just my own personal opinion, and I'm just agreeing with both Andrew and Jay and just the subtlety of this. You know, I would, I would prefer to see, besides, instead of restrict or eliminate left turns when possible, either the removing elimination or end or restrict or eliminate left turns when appropriate would, would make me more comfortable as a, just as, as a community member, I would be uncomfortable sort of thinking that all, that we're gonna try and remove left turns. I think that, you know, what is it gonna do cars go up and around and make, there, there's other issues that uh, get opened up for that. And that would be um, my thoughts on this particular part of the, uh, of the resolution. Okay, and I see hands, hands are up. Yep. Does Ken accept that as friendly? Um, well, um, if, for one thing, re restricting um, is the most effective tool that DOT has 
right now. Um, it it reduces reduced uh, injuries to pedestrians forty and cyclists forty one percent, and uh, and eliminating obviously is the most effective thing you can do because legally you're not allowed to make a left turn. And as I said, this is something they do all over the city. Um, so we're oh. just uh, trying to nudge them a little bit and saying, uh, well, are there other places where this might be possible? So okay, what's the, uh, what, what, give me some examples. I'm, I'm not clear what you mean by restrict as opposed well, to eliminate. Uh, well, I think what they mean by restrict is uh, no left turn between five and seven. Oh, okay. So, so limiting the hours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or, or only when the when the moon is in Mars is in retrograde. Can we yeah. put that in the resolution? <laughs> uh, what What is that? Can we put the res that in the resolution so we understand what the resolution is? You, do you put a definition of restrict? Yeah. Sure. You could you could just say for example. Yes. Yeah. In the, I have the, a question. Uh, when if, can um, in in reading the resolution, which, which which I support, I was you know trying to visualize various intersections. There are obviously some that are very problematical: 79th and West End and Broadway, coming off the West Side Highway, and so forth. And, and this is purely uh, a, a question of ignorance on my part, but um, throughout the state, uh, in, e in every place in the state except New York City, uh, unless it's specifically prohibited, right turns on red are permitted. And I think virtually every state in the union permits right turns on red unless it's specifically uh, prohibited. And I was trying to visualize, for example, if you come off the West Side Highway going northbound onto 79th Street, you can't make a left turn on uh, Riverside Drive. The right. first left turn is on West End. And one of your observations, one of your uh, uh, facts that's recited in the uh, resolution uh, one of the uh, left turn problems is that cars back up waiting for, waiting for cars coming in the opposite direction. Uh, they have to wait till they clear the intersection and it creates congestion, pollution, uh, delay, and I'm sure a lot of impatience uh, as well. And, and visualizing it, it would seem to me that in certain cases, at least, by making a right turn on red legal, it would help, in fact, to thin out the left turners and actually end up being more safe. Since, you know, when you're making a right turn, obviously, as this study shows, uh, the real danger in, in, in these turn situations is left turns. Um, it would give you know drivers coming in the opposite direction a chance to clear that intersection. Pedestrians are, unlike when you're making a left turn, pedestrians are right there in front of you. And, and there also might be a delay on that and that might help clear some of the congestion. Uh, again, I, I, I ask it out of ignorance of, of uh, traffic expertise, but has anybody looked at that uh, possibility? Not that I know of, Jay. Um, uh, I, if I, you know, it would be a, a huge political lift to make a legalized right turn on red here in New York. Um, and I would think that the right right now six percent of pedestrian injuries are from right turns, and I would oh, they, that, that would go up for sure. I, I mean, it's clearly speculative to know what effect that would have on alleviating some of the congestion and- Jay, that's so ironic so that you're asking for that considering how long we've been trying to get signage uh, when you come off the, the, uh, the Henry Hudson Parkway at various places because that's the first place vehicles are setting their wheels in New York City, which has a no right on red. 
Well, I, Andrew, I, you'll recall that uh, several years ago for a short time coming off at 96th Street, uh, a right turn on red was permitted. And then at some point there was a sign that said no right turns yeah. on, on red. And now they're both gone. Yeah. Um, we have some other hands up. So Barbara, did you want to speak? Yeah, I would like to please. Um, I have a few comments I'd like to make. Um, I could support, I basically like this resolution. However, I have issues with it. Um, I could support a left turn being restricted, but I, I can't support it being eliminated. I don't think it makes any sense when you consider that we have two truck routes in the area, Columbus and Amsterdam Avenue. And I, I, I just can't imagine why you would want a vehicle like that to do if they can't make a left turn. Um, of the 10 most dangerous intersections, I had said this in an email to you guys, um, and Colleen, if you're on the phone, I'm sure you remember this because this was my major squawk when I was working for the Columbus Avenue bid and my office was just a block away. And every day on my way home, I walked to Amsterdam and more than, probably more than, five or six times crossing from the east side of Amsterdam to the west side of Amsterdam on 79th Street, I got trapped between two cars. One, a car coming from the east, turning north onto Amsterdam, and also a car or a bus turning left onto Amsterdam. And a pedestrian could easily and often got trapped in the middle. So I think that is an extremely dangerous intersection. I had suggested um, the, having a barn stance there where traffic comes to a complete halt. So pedestrians and can cross absolutely safely, but that never happened. But I'd like to see this intersection added back there again. Um, I think split phase signals are a good idea. And um, I, I just want to point, to that, point out that uh, a million years ago, back in the dark ages, when, when I was the co-chair of transportation with Andrew, we asked over and over and over again for DOT to please put small signs that say, no turn on red at the Broadway Mall intersections, turning left. Do you remember, Andrew? Yeah, I sure do. And that never happened. And I, I never understood why. But in fact, if they went back there again, we could solve a big problem on Broadway. We could, we yeah. absolutely could. Yeah, okay, that, those, that's it, those are my comments. Thanks, well, Barbara. Barbara, on, on the word eliminate, um, uh, there, as you know, Jay just pointed out uh, at an inter intersection at 79th and, and uh, Riverside where they've been eliminated already. Mm -hmm. um, and there are lots of other examples. Um, so basically what you're saying is you're, you're, you're sure that there's no other place in the district where we might benefit from a elimination of a left turn. Because um, all, all we're saying is, you know, it's like a speed bump or a, you or know, a stop sign. Frankly, we're saying, it, seems, it seems more to benefit bicycles because you're asking cars to not make a left turn, but of course the bikes can make a left turn. So I, no, bikes, bikes couldn't, bikes uh, would have to abide by the same. There's a real good reason why 79th and Riverside, uh, a left turn uh, is, is prohibited. It's, it's an unusual move, um, yeah. depending on, on the traffic level and the ability to get into the left turn lane is not always there. So we all supported that. Uh, but then if you say you can't turn on West End either, um, and you make everyone go to Broadway or Amsterdam. I mean, there are ramifications, but well, you know, I think if DOT finds some some dangerous intersections where they would feel uh, bring them to us, we'll we'll take a look at them. At the very minimal, we could have split phase so that so that people are protected. That that that's all I'm saying. Exactly what you're saying, Andrew. There may be a place. Um, so we're well, asking them, yeah, I'm asking them to look at restricting or eliminating where possible. 
Yeah. Well, Obviously, it's, it wouldn't be possible. Well, I, I, again, I think some of the problem, a middle ground would be to eliminate doing it where possible and substituting where appropriate or where practical, indicating like that indicating that we support some discretion uh, rather than just eliminating it. Yeah. Of course, it's possible everywhere, Ken. I, I, I would take practicable as a friendly amendment. Okay, that's good. I think that makes sense. And okay. you know, if DOT chose those intersections they felt were dangerous for a left turn, I would certainly consider that too. And, uh, you know, asking DOT again for wait for green before proceeding signs uh, on Broadway um, <laughs> for all turns, I, I think would be, would be, mm -hmm. A good part of this resolution as well, if that's if that's a, a be it a, be it additional you know additionally be it result. Right. But let we have hands up, so let's go to um, Christian. Okay, uh, I I have a problem with the word eliminate. I think it's too negative, and uh, I think it's going to rob the community the wrong way. I would prefer to say to uh, restrict or make a no left turn sin, uh, no, no left turn on an intersection where practical. You know, I, 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 I could go with that, but I think you use the word eliminate, it's just going to uh, cause con more controversy. And it's so already it's, a major friendly amendment to use the word practical, so can you? Practicable. Practicable, so that's not an issue. I would say to you, I, 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 I will vote no on, with the word eliminate there. I, 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 I cannot support that. And I, 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 will, I would bet you that a lot of people in the community would feel the same way. Hey, I so, agree with them. So I what did you know. want to replace it with? You could replace it by saying institute a no left turn or restrict left turn where, where practical. You know, or where, you know. I, I think that I, that's less inflammatory and I, I think people can go along with that. That's fine. Okay, okay. okay. Um, um, William Ortiz, you're next. Hi, everyone. Um, so I had a couple of thoughts um, that I kind of want to throw out there and a couple of suggestions as well. Um, just reading the resolution again, it, it cites that in you know 2019, we passed a resolution that uh, works with the DOT in the 28th and 24th precinct to identify the 10 most dangerous intersections. So I would ask, Ken, if you know, if you have received what are those top 10 um, most dangerous uh, intersection? Like, you know, it's been a year or so, so it would be nice to know what those intersections are. Um, and is this left turns completely going northbound, southbound, west and eastbound? Which direction specifically? Um, Cause I just, uh, the resolution reads, you know, uh, most dangerous intersections in our district and on Broadway intersections as well. So it sounds like you're never going to go left in Manhattan again. <laughs> um, I like split phase signals. Uh, we have it on 79th street. Um, when I ride my bike, I feel when I ride city bike, I feel safe with that thing on, honestly, as a pedestrian, knowing that it's there, I feel safe with it on, with it on. So I think having more split phase signals would benefit the community as a whole, or well, the city as a whole, I think too. Um, and the other reason why I don't like the idea of no left turns completely is on 96th Street, where we have open streets, uh, taking the northbound M7 or M11 on a weekend, it, it, <laughs> from 93rd to 96th Street, one time, I kid you not, took 20 minutes to get off that bus because all the cars were just moving. And I would, Hate to see more vehicles get stuck in traffic, not moving, more pollution in the air that we have to breathe. Um, so I would go as far as saying that the resolution should just end at, uh, you know, beginning with the 10 most dangerous intersections in our district, period, and remove and all our Broadway intersections and to restrict and eliminate left turns where possible. Uh, I want to continue what we started from 2019, where we look at the 10 most dangerous district uh, intersections and starting from there, what the, what the solutions are. I just don't think 
eliminating left turns completely is a solution, but having the signals, more split phase signaling and even uh, signage is what resolution proposes, proposes would be the best, um, best solution for, for all everyone, drivers, cyclists, pedestrians. So I would like to just go as far as saying, remove starting from annual broad range intersections, um, just to finish. I think that's the part to be removed. And I think it'd be more, it would shake the community, community less, I think. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Ken, when we get our statistics of the 10 most dangerous intersections, does that come from DOT or NYPD? Um, well, Rich could answer this better than I could, but... Um, or Rich, yeah. We were, we were supposed to... I did it. What? When I used to be on the committee, I used to do it. Maybe there's someone else on the committee who can do it now. Yeah, I, I took a quick look at uh, a site called Crash Mapper, and and uh, you know it's probably not an authoritative list, but I could go through it if you want. What if it was not a cyclist but a pedestrian that was getting hit? Would that show up on a cyclist crash map? It's a crash mapper is both pedestrians and cyclists. It's mostly okay. pedestrians. I, I think it would behoove us to get a list of those those intersections, right. and uh, when when the weather is a little more. Uh, benevolent. We should go out, look at those intersections. I've been trying to get the information from the police about the direction of travel that has caused these crashes, and I'm not having any success with that. I've asked numerous times, and for some reason this, this is privileged information, or they don't want to give it to you, or whatever, but we need to know these things. That's, well, how, we can, you know, that's how we can get an adjustment to the signals yeah. that makes sense. Well, the idea was that we were going to work with the uh, the precincts to come up with this list. Um, and as far as I know, it never happened. Oh, well, but, we have some new uh, precinct leaders and I think we should reach out again and start this dialogue again. Howard, do you mean? agree? Absolutely, we, th there's no doubt about that. I've always believed that's, that's where you get the best. Um, so when we have police effect. speaking at our meetings, we need to get them started yep. on this again right 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 absolutely absolutely um all right we have some other hands um rich is that Wait, your hand up can, or I, is just, that an can old... I just interject something andrew can we yeah can sure we, we, pen has accepted a friendly amendment to make it clear that this is not calling for the elimination of left hand turns it's calling for the dot to look at these intersections and where practicable that's the language i think that's the word we agreed on to, to eliminate them, but in most cases, it would be split phase or some other um, change that would make these intersections safer. So it would be helpful if, if, if people's comments were addressed to that mod resolution that's been modified and not a blanket restriction of all left-hand turns because that's not what this calls for. Right, but, but Howard, having you and, and Ken said these, say these things, because we know split phase is, is good, shouldn't we be asking for that on all left turns, but especially yeah. at our most, uh, yeah. you know, because it saves lives, right? Yeah, although yeah. restricting left turns or eliminating them saves even more. Yeah, this is, I see this as a very, a relatively modest resolution because it's only singling out 10 intersections. Our, our community has, hundreds of intersections, so. Does, does this resolution now say the 10 most dangerous intersections somewhere? Because I missed that. I don't mean to jump in, but I think Roberto is waiting to speak. Oh. Okay. But we're, we're, well, I mean, just one second. It's still the 10 most dangerous intersections, isn't it? That's what it's Whatever said. practicable, yeah. as opposed to the 10 most dangerous. Yes. I read this a little more broad. That's why I was confused by it. It seemed like it was the top 10 in elimination and when possible. And I wasn't sure if that was extending past the 10 yes. with any left-hand turn, which was my concern. So I, I think other people have that concern that they're confused by that if we want to. It, it, it is say the 10 most dangerous, I'm all Broadway, so. It looks like it's more than the 10, as, as I think some people are reading. I'm just making a comment. 
That's if, it's every, if it's every left turn on Broadway, I cannot support that. No. Um, if, if it That's asks what it DOT, says now. If it asks DOT to put in, stop here, you know, wait here on red until green um, on all intersections of Broadway, I would absolutely support that. Yeah, that's exactly why I mentioned just to remove the last that last part that reads starting and right. the intersections. The exactly. rest of it is fine with except with I think with that part, in my opinion. Well, with with regard to Broadway, Andrew, yeah. if we took out Broadway and put in uh, another where uh, and and therefore clause and said uh, what you were just saying, put in a sign everywhere saying stop here until uh, until green. I would support that. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Why don't we do that? That's good. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've been asking for that for I can't tell you how many years. Yeah, very, very. Because the, don't because give me the width forces... of the balls. You know, safety is safety. Uh, you know, let's let's do the right thing here. So that because that that forces a left turning driver to stop and wait. Um, until he can, he can, he can, he can turn within the mall, but he can't cross the right. other direction right. of traffic right. until exactly. he, has, he or she has a green. And then presumably any pedestrian crossing would have a don't walk signal. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Can I make a suggestion as somebody who's taking the minutes for the meeting and is going to have to type up part of this resolution? <laughs> <laughs> can somebody either put in the chat what we're, I think what we're all coalescing around that we agree to? Um, and then everyone can look at it quickly and then we can uh, either vote on that or a we fine can idea. make sure it's correct. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. I just, I've lost a lot in translation with everyone's comments. And want to make Thank sure you for trying, trying to do this. It's been quite a discussion. So I, I, I think that can help wrap this up. Right. Roberta? I don't think we should concentrate on the 10. There are more than 10. And, you know, I'm, I'm a walker. I walk everywhere. And there's certain intersections where I would almost cross the street to walk on the other side so I don't have to worry about a left turn, um, someone turning left that can't see me, that might hit me. Um, so I, I wouldn't limit to 10. And I also don't want to say every every left turn on Broadway. But, but I think the resolution should be practicable. I like that word. But I also think it should, it should include more than 10 intersections. And I think have, having the that you can cross before other cars can move but i think we have to somehow and i i, I know this is a problem with dot a method that if i'm driving a car i know i can't turn left because the light's not going to turn until the other people start crossing the street for example at 72nd street and west end avenue there is a uh, the pedestrians have a have a have the first chance to cross on the um, west side of of West End Avenue, crossing um, towards cross Seventy Second Street, and then the cars have a chance to go. And if you haven't started at the second that the light turns green, the cars are already turning into you. And and I have barely made it across the street so many times and I'm very agile. And I know that people that aren't so agile have a, have a big chance. And if I'm at that corner and the instant the light turns green, I'm not there, I wait because I'm afraid to start crossing. We're gonna be discussing that intersection uh, at greater detail but a little later. Are, yes, yeah, you're but, right. But it's not just that intersection there. You know, I'm just using that one because I cross it often but there are plenty of others. So I think the resolution should be uh, large enough to include some of these other intersections, but specific enough that we all can vote on it. I, I would accept that. Get rid of the 10 and Broadway and put in what we suggested for Broadway. Um, so then can we get some updated language on this possible resolution so everybody knows what we're talking about? Uh, I think that would be helpful. Perhaps, because I know that we've had challenges, perhaps we can go on and go on with a different part of the meeting and come back and maybe Ken can play. If we want to vote on it now, I, I just don't want to be in a position where there's a lot of disagreement on what we agreed on here. 
So I would make the suggestion that perhaps Ken can play with it or get what he's comfortable with. We go on with another part of the meeting and then come back. He could post. There that. are still some hands up, Steve, that have, who haven't Gillian, spoken. Gillian hasn't spoken. But, okay. Well, and, and Mark Diller would like to speak I, as well. I, I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why don't we make it quick? Because we're going to come back to this when we have the actual language that we're considering. That would so be great. Quick comments from Mark and Julian. Mark, and then Rich. Mark, Julian, and Rich, and then the next, then we'll move on. Okay, sorry, I thought Julian was going first. Um, so my only concern, I, I think that you've made great progress um, with this discussion. Um, I still think that the most dangerous intersections are the ones that won't be practicable because if I remember correctly from your previous meetings and discussions, the most dangerous intersections are the ones that lead to or from the highway. And so I don't think DOT is going to cancel left turns to and from the highway. And the, my only other concern is that if we restrict left turns in other places along the way, you take away the opportunity for somebody to turn left and get closer to the highway at a street other than 79th or 96th. And then you'd be concentrating volume on those intersections where you're actually already, you know, by your own research, concluding that they're already the most dangerous. Now, maybe that slows everybody down and that's a good thing. And if that's the intention, then I can support it. But otherwise, I think there might be an unintended consequence here. So that's my one, my one added point other than, other yeah. than endorsing uh, what you're doing. Mark, that's why we're, we're adding we're practicable. Julia? Yeah, but the practicable is, the practicable is gonna force the traffic to the places where you don't want it is my point. Well, that is a practical. possible consequence, yes. And it's not practicable. Yeah. <laughs> it turns out not to be practicable. Yeah. Well, like I said, you know, 96th Street, anywhere, 96th Street or 97th Street is going to be one of those places. And yet that's the place where you want, to, you want the protection. So you want to take volume off of that, not add to it. That's my point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Julian. I, I lowered my hand afterwards. I, I, okay, I sort great. of lost my comment. But I just, I just while I have the mic, just a few things. I just want to agree with Mark. I think that's what he said is really important. And I think framing this is very important as well, especially when we go to full board and how we, how we frame it, because I was really surprised just doing research on this, that there is pretty much no downturn to, you know, creating these left turn situations, except in the situations that Mark was mentioning. It, you know, it decreases actually the fuel used by cars, it decreases idling time, it helps congestion and it saves lives. Like this is good for, for car users and for pedestrians. And, it, and it's, there shouldn't be any reason that people can oppose this um, apart from the very specific situations that Mark was mentioning. And so if we craft the, the resolutions language specifically, I think this should be a resolution that everyone should be able to get behind. And so I, I agree, I think language and the way we present it is very important to that. That's absolutely right, Julian. Yep, absolutely. Language is everything. Um, is that everybody who has been waiting? Let's see. Uh, Rich. Oh, Rich, right. Rich. Yes, thank you. Um, so a few things. One is, if you look at a crash map of our district, Broadway is horrible. And we know that there are the most injuries of pedestrians, motorists, and cyclists on Broadway. And I think I'm concerned that this idea of having the half turn on Broadway might not be effective at reducing the uh, number of crashes and number of injuries on Broadway. Um, a, a key point here, and this is very counterintuitive, and Julian just uh, alluded to it, is that left turns actually slow traffic. And there's that feeling of, wow, I have to go three extra turns, I have to go around the block uh, to be able to go left. Feels like it's gonna take a lot longer, but studies show that left turns take longer because you have to wait for the light and you have to wait to be able to cross traffic. And not only that, but you're blocking a lane of traffic when you're waiting. And so traffic can be sped up if we don't allow left turns. And it's really counterintuitive. It feels wrong. But you know, if what we want to do is both make the streets safer and make them more efficient, we could be better off not having left turns. And UPS has figured this out. Others have figured it out. It's gonna be counterintuitive. It might take some adjusting, but that's the, the answer to making things safer. Um, I'm also concerned about the idea of only allowing left turns at certain times of day. As Colleen mentioned in chat, you know, DOT is trying to reduce sign clutter. It's also confusing. And when you're driving, if, especially people who don't know what they're doing, driving on Broadway or driving in our district, if they have to look at a sign and try to figure out what time it is, that's confusing. And I think that could cause more problems. In Rich, terms that would be true, but you don't have to have that situation now, as we know, 
um, left um, street street signals and timers can be adjusted by time of day now. So, for instance, if you didn't want a left hand turn at a certain time of day, you'd simply have a red arrow pointing to the left, meaning you can't turn. Although that could be confusing and people might just sit there waiting until that red arrow turns <laughs> and they might wait for 12 hours until that happens. I think they'd learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the out of towners, the people who don't know the system. Right. Um, could right. be confused by it. I understand the sign clutter issue, absolutely. Um, I know I, it's- Oh, sorry, go ahead. I know it's not the resolution, but um, since Jay brought up right turn on red, I think that would be a really bad idea because that would mean that there's never a time when pedestrians can cross when they're not at some risk of cars going through an intersection. Um, now, at least when there's a red turn, when there's a red light, you know that you can cross and where the light's red, no, um, no uh, vehicles are going to be crossing. Um, and then as far as the 10 most dangerous, I, I mean, I think that is something that we should focus on. Uh, and I think that left turns are, um, you know, are a key issue. And, and if you look at what the 10 most dangerous have been in the past, it's all at least one uh, two, two-way street, if not the intersection of two two-way streets. And uh, to Mark's point, you know, um, where those intersections are the ones where you'd think that you'd want a left turn. I'm not sure about that. And I think that we might be able to eliminate a lot of problems um, by eliminating left turns at those intersections. I think you find, I think you told us once, Rich, and I seem to recall a lot of our district's worst crash sites are on roads, on streets that feed the Henry Hudson Parkway. And it's likely with people turning at West End Avenue to try to get to the highway and the other direction traffic on West End Avenue is what they are not anticipating coming or it was obscured in some way and that's the crashes. And yep. if, we, if we allowed turns in one direction but not the other, we could probably reduce those uh, immediately. Like in one direction at a time is what I'm trying to say. And one last point. Um, Wait for green before proceed. One last point, not about this resolution, but it's been brought up a lot about the 10 worst intersections. Uh, it's got put off by COVID, but uh, I had been setting up a, a process of working with both the, uh, the two precincts and with Colleen and Ed at DOT to really um, you know, put our heads together to figure out what to do about those 10 worst intersections. Uh, we should see if there's someone else on the committee who wants to take that up. Okay, we will do that. But we have a couple of hands that we have to get before we move on. And, and Ken is writing a new draft of the resolution. So, um, Susan, go ahead. Thanks very much. Um, just a quick question following up on what Mark Diller um, commented on. Would it make sense to do a study on this and see what the impact would be before doing it? Um, so instead of just actually plunging in and doing it, um, you know, take, have DOT take a look at it and see what the impact would be. Well, I'm not sure how we would do that. We're, we're, we're not, we're not, for one thing, we're not proposing anything specific. We're just saying, take a look at left turns. They're incredibly dangerous. See what you can do to make them safer for us. Um, I don't know how you, no, I mean, the, the study, the study has already been done by DOT because they said, you know, if you do X, you get 41% reduction. If you do Y, you get 33% reduction. Um, you know, that, I think that's, that's the study. Well, what I'm suggesting, I guess, is um, there's, I've asked a couple of times if you know what the 10 most dangerous intersections are, and it sounds like it's not a conclusive list right now. So the first thing would be to do the study and find out where they are, at least get the data for that, and then um, do some sort of um, uh, modeling to see, you know, if you take away the left turn or if you change it this way or change it that way, find out what the most optimal way to be able to handle it at those 10 intersections. So you really know what it is you're talking about. That's all. It's just a thought. Um, I would want to leave that kind of detail to DOT, I think. Well, that's what I'm suggesting is to leave it to DOT and have them do a study on it. It's just a thought. Thank you. I would support Thank that. you, Susan. Um, we have some public folks who would like to speak. Alisa, are you on? Please unmute. Lisa, did you want to speak? This is your time. 
Hello? Yep. Now we oh, hear yeah, you. Yeah, okay, good. Um, thank you so much. I wanted to share uh, some testimony from a community member who was actually affected by left turns. Um, Dana Lerner, the mother of Cooper Stock, sent me this testimony. If you'll remember, Cooper was killed crossing the street at 97th and West End Avenue. He was nine years old. He was holding his father's hand when he was hit by an impatient taxi driver making a left turn from 97th onto West End Avenue. Cooper would be 16 years old today if that driver hadn't killed him. So I'll share what she wrote. That one left hand turn destroyed my entire life and my family's. Seven years later, we are struggling to stay alive and find a reason to be here. Living without your child is hell on earth. I think about ending my life very often. Every holiday when you are celebrating, I am distraught. Once in a while when something decent happens, we can't celebrate because we are missing Cooper. He was a great kid. He was hysterically funny, kind, and loving. His friends said he was the peacemaker we could really benefit from having a person like this around, especially now. Don't you agree? So when you make your decision, think about what is most important, a child getting to grow up and flourish in New York City or allowing drivers every convenience in the world, even though it makes the streets more dangerous for all involved, including the drivers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you of course know that um, there are things that we can do to minimize these type of things. And I believe we have done one of those, obviously not in time for poor Cooper and his family, but people rushing through 97th Street, making a southbound left turn on West End and an immediate right-hand turn on 96 to get to the highway cannot do that anymore. We have timed the lights so that that can't be done. So there is no point in speeding. And I think these kinds of things can be done at other intersections and we can, we can stop this, this horrible loss of life. Um, and you know, if, someone, if it takes someone an extra light to wait, so be it. I don't but think in you. that case that would have saved his life. I think what was needed there and what we have now is the, curb, is the uh, pedestrian refuge, which forces drivers to take a much wider left turn. Absolutely. That, that would helps. have saved his life. Absolutely. And unfortunately, we didn't do that. We didn't know that, yep. Um, Erica, and then we will move on to the next thing while Ken does his thing. Hi, can, okay, great. I guess there's just no video. Um, so I want to acknowledge, of course, the incredibly painful testimony we just heard. Um, oh, sure. But I also want to um, be realistic that it's a choice we make as a society to have certain modes of transportation, obviously, our greatest way of avoiding all deaths would be not to partake in these, but but we do have cars. And so I think it's important that we be realistic about the situation that we're in and, and the life that we live. Um, I'm very aware of, of, of some of these issues. My children go to school on 79th Street, which as people noted, is particularly challenging with the double. Um, and I myself as a driver have had times where I make that left and then I'm surprised by people in the crosswalk because you're so busy trying to avoid the oncoming car. So I yep. recognize that there are some real challenges, but I think that Mark Diller made an excellent point um, that if we, if we close down other options, then the pressure points just get even more loaded. And I mean, even just as a, as a kind of frivolous thing that's not so frivolous, the amount of honking and pressure that a driver can get to, to get through when you have a light where only two cars or so are making a turn at a time and it just piles up and piles up. I think we really have to be careful about the unintended consequences for the rest of the neighborhood, which other streets will get that traffic. And I think that's part of what Susan was alluding to that it's not just looking at the impact on the on the one intersection that we're thinking about, but the impact on the entire neighborhood, which is really important. That's an um, excellent another point. Another concern that I have is when thinking about the amount of time that people are spending on the road, and I'm, I'm not an expert, I don't know if really all right turns would actually be faster. It's hard to imagine, as someone said. Um, but I think of school children in school buses who spend already tremendous, tremendous amounts of time on school bus routes. You can have a child picked up at 6.30 a.m. if they're early on their route. And when I think about, they really don't have a destination that they have to get to. They have to get to each child along the way. So the impact of trying to map out school bus uh, routes with no left turns seems really extraordinary to me. And I would, I would really um, cringe at the thought of children having to spend additional uh, half hour to hours on, on buses. And I think that that's something to really consider. It's and, not and, a luxury, it's a reality thing, of their lives. Yes, and another thing as to what you're saying is, 
if people are slowed down, does that mean that they, they feel frustrated and they speed up somewhere else where we don't want them to be speeding either? Or it's the last car to get in before the light turns or at, right, you know, after right. the light turns. It's Unintended the consequences, um, exactly. I do, by the way, completely support better signage on the on the islands, I think a lot of out of town people don't understand what the rule is there about waiting their oh, turn for the light. They absolutely don't. They cross yeah. through the red lights. Yep. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, just, just, so to re just to reiterate, this resolution is not calling for a ban on left turns. It's just asking for a reevaluation of intersections and maybe they could be reduced uh, in our district. It would all be safer. So want to do is make our streets safer for everybody right, and right. want drivers to be aware that what they do impacts pedestrians children older adults and all all, all uses of the street absolutely well let's ken is going to come up with some new language and right. while he's doing that he's gotten a lot of input uh, why don't we go to the next agenda item, which is my favorite one, loading zones. Colleen, I, I was looking recently, we called over two years ago for a, a series of loading zones on Central Park West in light of the great increase of um, deliveries of online shopping. This was over two years ago. And since that, we've had the pandemic, which has put home, um, online, uh, put deliveries into warp speed. And in most of Central Park West, there are zero, the number zero, there are no loading zones. This is a critical thing and it's been over two years. Can you explain what's going on and if there's a hold up, what we can do to break this log jam? Hi, Howard. Um, the issue with the loading zone is that we have to look carefully at the locations um, to determine you know, the spots uh, that would be feasible to create the loading zone. I don't know if it's been really two years. I have to pull the resolution oh, been, and check that. It's been just over two years. I, Colleen, I could send you the resolution along, and I also wanted to point out, along with the resolution, we um, on the Transportation Committee broke up and came up with proposed spots. So this is, again, uh, something that's enormously problematic for our community that we, it was two years and I think two months ago, I will send it to you after the meeting, and so it's, it's, we'd like to know what's going on. It's, it, this is a very long time to wait on something so important. Sure. Um, let me, let me see what the holdup is with that. Um, and I'll get back to you. I do have the resolution. You don't need to send it to me. Okay. And Colleen, the law, the, the absence of these loading zones means there's so much double, double parking, which means visibility is reduced. Um, throughput is reduced for both vehicles and buses. It's just, we need it. Yeah, and Colleen, we, we have discussed this at basically every committee meeting every single month. So I think we, we, I would like to have something in writing from the DOT that I could circulate to the committee. This is a big problem that we've been waiting over two years on. Again, it's not as if we, we have a whole program of, of loading zones, we have zero. So. I would like something I could circulate to the committee in the next week or so. Is that going to be possible? Yes, I can get okay. that. Good. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Jay's hand is up. Jay. Just a question. The, the uh, resolution, Howard, I think that you're referring to, uh, was, was before my time on the, on the yes. committee. And it, whatever the time frame is, of the, the we've eliminated in whether it was right after that or before that, uh, what is it, 400 plus uh, parking spaces on Central Park West between uh, 59th and 110th. As part of the, the uh, study or evaluation of these loading zones, uh, do you have any information as to how many additional parking spaces on Central Park West would be eliminated? Well, so far zero, they put in zero loading well, zones. My assumption is the way we did the survey, and this was before your time again, it was just over two yeah. years ago, we right. assumed that each loading zone would, el would eliminate two curbside parking spots. But on the other hand, it would greatly free up the street. 
my street, Central Park West, is a one lane street now. So if you could make it into a two lane street by the elimination of two parking spots, I think the vast majority of people would be very much in favor of that, especially given all of the ancillary safety benefits. So it, was it one loading zone on each block? I, you know, it's been so long ago, Jay. Honestly, I don't remember. I think it was one every other block. But I, okay. I don't. If you can find the information, I, I don't want to take up the time. If there were bus stops on the, on the block, we didn't have them on those blocks usually, Jay. Or it was an extension of the bus stop. Yeah. And we did them adjacent to um, fire hydrants, so there was more okay. leeway there. But we, we spent a lot of time on this over two years ago, and we're still, and again, it was important to the committee at the time. And we haven't heard nothing, Colleen. Was there a detailed like, resolution now? What, excuse me? Was there a detailed resolution? Absolutely. It was adopted by okay. the full board. Yeah. I just, just a, a request if you can find yes, it. Yes, before, and send it was it. before your time, on, it was during your time on the board, but before your time on the transportation right. committee. Um, we'll and, find it. Yeah, if you can just find it and shoot okay. it over to me so I, so I just know what the context is. Okay. Howard, Thanks. if I could just add and uh, just uh, and add a little bit with Colleen, in my sort of introduction call with Ed, Colleen, and DOT, I did raise the issue, this particular issue and the uh, and the issue of loading zones in general, and specifically the test program that's being done on West End. And um, my understanding, I'm, I'm a little bit of a tangent, that that West End program has been very successful, and that's the long term view in terms of loading zones for CB7, uh, non-specific to your Central Park West resolution, and that that will be rolled out and they're in the process of doing that. And I do recall talking about some of the reasons why uh, Central Park West uh, may ha has not been done, but I don't remember to be honest with them. So Colleen did talk about it. I, I do think there were some, some reasons that Ed brought out. Again, maybe you can find that. We did have a call and, and it and escapes me. And I do recall, though, that the, that the all the spots across did factor into this. Again, I'm just, I don't remember all the details. Colin, I do recall speaking about this and perhaps we can get the specifics regarding uh, the Central Park West ones. From our, um, the committee. Yeah, I'd like to, in all fairness to the committee again, Colleen, I'd like to have something to circulate in the next week or so, so we can see where, where we are with, where we are on this after, after so much time has elapsed. That'd be great. Okay. Sure. Okay, do people have static or is it just me? Yes, there is static now. Um, some, I don't know who's. Can everyone mute themselves will get it by process of elimination. Can everyone go on mute? It just stopped. It did. Thank you, whoever stopped their static. Um, um, you want to move on to 72nd and West End, Howard? or? Yes, is there someone here to speak on 72nd and West End? Yes, there is. Uh, Ellen, I believe her name is? Danielle. Oh, Danielle. Yeah. Okay, so that's right, Danielle. I think she's in the attendees right now. And I'm glad to also speak on it. Yes, unmute Danielle, whoever's in charge of that. It's Danielle Morris. Let's see if we can. Um, if I can. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I don't think I have the ability to share my screen and I have a very short presentation. Um, can someone, Sarah, I sent it to you. Can you possibly share your screen? I shared, it's a. No, it's a wait, I can promote you and then you can do your screen. So perfect, there. thank you so much. And you're in transition as we speak. I think you can now. You have to re-unmute re yourself, but you can share. Hi, it. everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, You're in San Francisco. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me just pull up my presentation. This relates to what um, some folks were already talking about. So it actually, I think, is a timely topic. Um, okay. Um, all right, 
Can you see, Andrew, I see you. Can you see this? West End yep. Avenue, by yep. Daniel we Scarsley? Okay. Absolutely. We can okay. see it. You don't see it. We do. You yeah. do. do, okay, we thank do. you. Thank you. Okay, everyone. Hello, my name is Danielle Morris. I live right near 72nd and West End, a very, very busy intersection. Um, I am a teacher. I am a mom. I've lived on the West Side for many years. Um, my children and I cross West End and 72nd all the time, um, many times a day. And um, I have some issues with the, um, with the intersection. So I'm just going to... Good briefly go through it. So this is looking, um, this is a picture of the south side of 72nd Street and West End Avenue, that intersection. It's three lanes wide um, on the downtown side. And I believe also three lanes wide, including the parking on the uptown side. There is a double yellow line in the middle, but it is thin and it is not very visible to really anyone driving by. It's not very prominent. Here is the uptown, the, the uptown side of 72nd and West End. And um, here a few years ago, they made the double lines thicker. And I believe that uh, the more visible double lines are more helpful to, um, to drivers to get them to slow down a little bit. Um, plus on the uptown side, there's only one or two lanes of traffic. Um, so I feel like the cars are slowing down just a little bit more on the north side. This is um, 70, this is the south side of in, the intersection of 73rd and West End. Again, there's only um, one or two lanes of traffic on either side, but again, it is a very thin yellow line. Um, but then you have 73rd, which only has one lane of traffic going in one direction. So it's obviously slightly safer. This is um, the north side of that same intersection, 73rd and West End. Again, you see they thickened that double line. It's almost three or four feet wide. And so just encouraging cars to slow down a little bit there. I think it's a little bit safer than it is at least on the south side of 72nd and West End. Um, now we get a little further uptown where they got super fancy and they made these lovely cutouts in the sidewalk that are certainly, I believe, slowing traffic down. This is looking north on 78th and West End. There's only one or two lanes of traffic on either side of the dividing yellow lines. The dividing yellow lines are pretty wide and, um, and the sidewalks had been built out significantly. So I think it's also, it's, it's better for pedestrians as well. And finally, 79th Street has been, I think, quite built out. And you see they have this like safer way for people in wheelchairs or people with carriages or hand trucks to cross. And it's been built out a little bit. Um, and I know that 79th Street and West End is, of course, a very busy intersection, just like 72nd Street. Um, however, this one looks and is safer, um, not just the built out sidewalks, but it seems that the yellow lines are more prominent, showing cars where they can or cannot turn. So, um, so my proposal or my goals are, I would like to make the intersections of 72nd and West End Avenue safer for all pedestrians, bicycle riders, and drivers. I'd like to see those yellow lines wider for all of these streets so that drivers are more likely to slow down. I'd like to consider designing the 72nd um, and West End intersection to make it more similar to the 79th Street and West End intersection. Again, safer for everyone. And lastly, I'd like to make the street safer for all children who are walking home from school alone or children whose their school buses drop them off on the uptown side and they have to cross over the street because they don't live on the same side of the street that the school bus um, drops off on. And this is safer for kids who are walking with a grown up or walking alone. And um, lastly, these are my kids and um, I want them to be safe in my neighborhood. Um, there was a very sad um, story shared before that we all know about from Cooper Stock's family and um, no mother wants that for their children. So I'd really like to see this intersection made safer. I understand it's a bus intersection, 70 seconds, this M72 turns down it, um, but it is, yeah. um, I, don't, I don't think it's a very safe intersection right now for, um, for families and for people living in the neighborhood. So I'll stop my share. It's the M72 and the M57. 
Yes, and the M5. They all go right through, three buses. Right. Um, and it just feels- So Danielle, um, yes. because yes. you know this intersection, thank you for this, for so, for so well. Um, which movement do you feel of vehicular traffic is the one that is putting you most in danger? It's, is it it's, north, it's, northbound? It's southbound, southbound. Southbound, west end? Yes, yeah, southbound. So it's because two lanes of traffic, let's say you're in front of, there's a bodega on the northeast corner um, that sells flowers and fruit and whatnot. And if you're there and you make a left onto West End, that can be dangerous, which is what the buses do and many taxi cabs and other drivers do. Or you could be coming from Riverside Boulevard or Riverside Drive, and then you make a right onto West End Avenue. So that double traffic, I feel like, I just feel like that south side of the intersection between uh, the west side of set, uh, the west side of West End and the east side of, of West End on the south side, I feel like is the least safe intersection. Danielle, intersection. you're right. Uh, that, that the east side, west side is very dangerous because you have traffic going to the, to the highway. <clears throat> Yes, you also have traffic speeding through to the highway. Right. But I feel, yes, yes, yes. And that is true also because you also have people coming uptown right. on the uptown side who make a quick left. And that's right. often when, Roberta, when you were talking about crossing that in a hurry, right. I also, you know, and I am also an agile person and I often wait until the, I see the walking man, because I'm not going to take that risk. I know people who have been, that is I know people who have been, who have died in vehicular homicides, you know, just absolutely. walking in New York. We just, it's safer just to stand and wait for the next light. Right, right. We yeah. actually got some of, some of that traffic signal changed at one point because there were a lot of people who also thought it was dangerous. I would like to, I'm going to go and look at it and see if there's another and, and, change. And, 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 yeah. it, it's not, so what happens is, there is a, 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 if you're on the west side of, of um, 72nd Street at uh, West End Avenue, you, you, get a, you get a light, you get a few seconds, and, and Daniel, help me on this one. You get a few seconds going south, and if you're, if you're not at, at the second when the, light turns and you walk really fast, cars are starting to turn into you. Yeah. So you're talking yes. about going from the northwest corner of 72nd and West End to the southwest south. corner. And if, if the light turns and, and you have a little child or you have a grandmother with you or you know, you're disabled or whatever, and you don't start the second the light turns and you're a third of the way, quarter of the way, yeah. cars start to turn against you. So obviously there's not enough pedestrian time built into that light. No, no, there isn't. And, and, and if you're on the north side, you have a, a different set of lights and, and that's not so good either. Um, and think, uh, what about the actual street markings? Are they are they sharp enough, or have they really faded? No, they um, they repainted the the white crossing marks yeah. that go across in the past few years. However, it's that thin double yellow line that makes me nervous. I don't understand why so many other parts of West End yeah. Avenue have the thick four feet across double yellow line, yet this intersection you know, where they're, and I'm telling you further south on West End, there's like a million schools. Oh, I could name yeah. 20 schools further south on West End Avenue. Tons of people I see walking their kids back and forth or yeah. kids dropping off on the school bus. That, that south side needs to be rerouted so that there's less traffic going in both directions. So that's, that's my biggest concern. Well, it's here's a, an idea for less traffic. But it's a real, it's a real concern. Hey, Andrew, can you get some order here? call on people who've had their hands up. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'll I'm, raise my hand. Um, so it looks like Barbara, Rich, and Jay. And Ken. And Danielle, Ken. Okay, Danielle, first of all, congratulations. This is an excellent presentation. It was very clear. It, 
I, it's, it's clearly needs some work. And I would suggest that we ask DOT to take a look at this. And in terms of making the, um, the, the areas larger as she showed, uh, there's no question that this should be done. It should be done the same way it's done in other dangerous intersections. And uh, you know, it's something that really is a priority. I think- I'm guessing Barbara and, and uh, Danielle that because this intersection doesn't, I mean, you can go northbound on the highway, but you, it's not for southbound and all of that, that it didn't get the attention like 79th and West End got, for instance. I'm really upset because I've been bringing this to the, to the transportation committee for three or four or five, maybe six years. You have? Yes, I have. You didn't make a presentation like Danielle's. <laughs> I have been bringing it up for years. I'm kidding you, Roberta. We're going we're gonna to look, Roberta and Danielle. It it's, didn't go for naught, trust me. Uh, so now the next person is Rich. Thank you and great uh, presentation, Danielle. The, the one thing I would say is um, further north, we have the pedestrian refugees or refuges. Um, <laughs> Got to be careful there. Um, and I wonder if they'd be appropriate um, both at 72nd and 79th Street. And my memory is foggy here, but I know we they got put in by DOT, unfortunately, yep. tragically, after the, um, the issue that Lisa brought up after Cooper Stock's death. And my memory is that, we, that DOT might have just put them north of 86th Street uh, because of that. But mm -hmm. I think we need to look south of 86th Street at any intersections and especially 79th and uh, 72nd and 79th Street. Uh, Rich, have... It would be really good because the cars turn at an angle that is, uh, they cut off. So if you had a refuge, they'd have to go all the way out and make a, 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 a greater left turn. Yeah, and um, as much as Danielle, I agree with you about um, you know, trying to slow down traffic, having paint um, doesn't always work. So it's, it's somewhat effective, but you know, especially if cars start riding over it, it'll wear down and get um, less visible. Whereas the uh, refuges um, are very effective and, and are permanent. Then that's what we should ask for. And I guess I can't call for a resolution, but um, I urge the committee to have a supporting this. Even if we're, you're not a member of the committee, all for it. We're, we're, we're absolutely moving forward on this. I mean, it's not even necessary for a resolution. Um, we're going to be talking about this intersection. We're going to each visit it and we're going to ask DOT to come up with a plan. And we can do that by letter. Um, but I think once we have a little more, um, you know, neither the M57 nor the M5 nor the M72 use articulated uh, bus equipment. So their turns can't be as, as narrow as an Arctic can when it makes a turn. So if we're putting pedestrian refuges at 72nd and West End, we have to, we have to see exactly where DOT is talking about for those. Danielle, thank you so much. Because oh, they yeah. didn't to me when I was just a board member. Roberta, we're in it together. Thank you, but we're not we're done. Jay, Jay has a question. I just had a simple question. Um, thank you for calling on me. Um, the, the proposal to widen the yellow line, uh, does that involve eliminating one of the driving lanes? Maybe. I don't it's a question know. for Danielle. I believe that's a question for an engineer, which I am not. I'm yeah. just a concerned exactly. parent. Exactly. No, I, I know, I understand. Yes. But in your list of, uh, in your list of proposed Solutions. One of them was. Uh, well, she didn't know. Why do you need yellow lane? I did. I did say that. I did say that. And perhaps that does mean eliminating okay, one of the lanes of traffic. Right. Perhaps that's what they did at 79th Street. Okay. And perhaps that is something. However, there's no buses turning up and down yeah. 79th no, Street. I, I, I just wanted to understand was, the yeah. implication yes. of the proposal. Perhaps it is. I don't, I, again, I'm not an engineer. I don't know the details of that. I just know it's unsafe as it is. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. And I believe next is Ken. 
Yeah, um, Rich is absolutely right that paint is not going to do it. Um, and uh, he's also right that we, as far as I know, on West End Avenue, we have two refuges, um, one where Cooper Stock was killed and one where um, I'm blanking on her name, but she was killed at um, 95th and West End Avenue. And Gene Chambers. In, Gene Chambers. Thank you. They put in refuges there. Um, and I don't believe what? there any more for this. For what? What? Why does somebody have to die and have a baby? That's exactly what I was about to say, Roberta. Um, we should not wait for the next death. Um, and I would, I'm not going to propose this resolution now, or I'm going to propose it for the uh, future meeting or maybe the next meeting, because we should not wait. But there is no reason why we can't have a pedestrian refuge at every intersection on West End. Thanks. And, and also, I just, to go a little bit further, if we want to, um, we now have, uh, during the uh, fair weather months in Open Street, between uh, 95th and 87th or 86th, we can just extend the Open Street down to 72nd. Then we have five local traffic only, five miles an hour. Doesn't get much safer than that. And we have all kinds of other north-south routes. Uh, we have to really get away from our our fear that that uh, you know taking space away from drivers may result in Carmageddon. That's just a fear. Anybody? I think that's all the hands on this one. Um, so th thank. Uh, oh, go ahead. No, 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 I'm I'm sorry. I just wanted to draw your attention to the chat that Colleen said that the geometric design division would have to look into this and she suggested that we pass a resolution to be able to do so. Oh, if, if that's what we she is asking for, I, I saw that, but I didn't see that she needed a resolution. I just asked her to do it, but- um, Why don't yeah. we let Colleen speak about it? Sure. Colleen, do you need a resolution or will a letter do or what do you need from us? So, you know, this is a really great presentation, I have to say, and it's very clear and concise, Danielle, it's a great job. Roberta's right, um, this intersection did come up in the past, and um, we were looking at some safety improvements, but of course, given the pandemic and COVID, everything had dropped. But this is something that we should resurrect and reevaluate again. I know um, the board has asked us to look at um, you know, a bike lane on 72nd Street. And I just wanna say that we are doing our thorough analysis on this. Um, and then when we do have something, we'll, we'll come to the community board. I know Howard is anxious about that as well. But in the meantime, I would suggest that, you know, we can look to see what safety improvements that we can do. And if the board can send me a resolution or a letter, you know, asking if we can look at the signal timing changes maybe look at improving the markings, um, have our geometric design look at that. And if it is feasible to install a pedestrian refuge island, that would be something that we would be amendable to look into. I would take resolution to do that. I would love um, our letter. Can I jump in on that? I think one of the reasons Mark. why we, I think one of the reasons we don't have pedestrian refuges is because we put in those left turn lanes on West End Avenue and that is a safety uh, improvement too. So what I would suggest is that adding to your shopping list flexible bollards to delineate um, um, yeah. the, uh, the, the, the yellow line where, yeah. where you can't put a refuge um, because that also functions to widen the, yeah. art, the radius of, of curvature. Yeah. We should yes, I believe we did something similar like that on Riverside and 72nd. We should have asked for ref refugee islands. I'm sorry. Not refugee islands, Roberta. Refuge. We should ask for the No, islands. the bollards are, bollards are good because they don't fade away. People see them no matter what, yeah, the weather exactly. and anything. Yeah. Exactly. In keeping with... Um, with our or with the committee's not um, or the committee's wanting to defer to DOT, should we say um, that we ask DOT for a plan that explores possibilities, including possibly pedestrian islands? 
Yep. Rather yep. than being prescriptive. Yep. Yep. And and installation of bollards where appropriate. Right. Yeah, right. potentially including installation of bollards. Yep. yep. Yeah, that's fine, Rich. I mean, that's very strong language. So, do you need a letter or or a resolution, uh, Colleen? I, you know what, it 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 depends on the community board. I, you know, a letter is sufficient. You know, I would. You know, okay, we'll draft it. We'll get back to you within within a couple of days. Do a letter, it, Colleen. It, in general, does a resolution carry more weight, or does it not matter? No. You know what? I don't think. You know, I'm I'm going to say. I don't think it does as long as we have something in writing from the community board asking us to, you know, look at these changes. Yeah. And Colleen, guess what? You're the one who's got that weird speaker, that chat, that uh, static. I tracked it down. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I, I tried to you. get on the Zoom. I try to get on the Zoom from my computer, but guess what? My speaker is not working, and it's with the work laptop. Oh my gosh. So I have to use my phone. So I'm gonna star six. And um, you all decide what you want to send, if it's a resolution or a letter. All right. Thank you so much. You'll be hearing from us. Okay. Howard, you okay with a, with a letter, everybody? Um, Absolutely, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll draft some language and we'll make sure everybody's concerns are included. Absolutely. Great. Um, is Ken, oh, there's a couple of, still a hand or two. Jonathan. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I still had my hand raised. Uh, oh, although I, I, I support the uh, uh, any three calling out for efforts, basically. I, I did see there's some coverage from 2014 of the community board discussing this and uh, the DOD changes explicit, like we're explicitly called out for not including um, a pedestrian island at 72nd. So a lot of people were upset about that then. And I uh, naturally people still are now, it's still dangerous. Uh, thanks. All right, thanks. Um, is Ken ready or should I give my uh, MTA updates? Uh, if you I'm going to do the MTA update now and then we'll go back to. Okay. Okay. And Ken, if you okay, have any I, language, why don't you put it in chat? Okay. Well, okay. But I need Mark to, uh, if he could give me uh, a sentence uh, summarizing uh, his point. Put it in oh. chat if you could. I will. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. All right, some, uh, some updates uh, from MTA. There is a lot, of, the MTA is using the uh, lower ridership uh, and middle of winter to do a lot of work on the system. And for that reason, there are a lot of what are known as GOs, general orders. So if you're traveling on a weekend or you know, nights before 1 a.m., please check uh, mta.info for all the things that are going on because there are several reroutes going on these weekends and evenings. Uh, due to pandemic, uh, Kawasaki is having some issues and the delivery of R211 cars, which will replace the R46 cars, which I happen to like because they have uh, conversational seating and we're losing all of those. But the new cars are very advanced, but there has been a delay due to COVID. And I don't believe we're getting the first test train of those until perhaps the middle of 2021. And that'll be very interesting to see. Um, the obvious changes in Washington uh, seem to bode pretty well for a host of issues that we have been addressing. Um, you know, uh, Amtrak Joe Biden now is president. Um, Obviously, uh, Pete Buttigieg is a big infrastructure um, guy and is um, very favorably inclined to give the MTA the answer they are seeking on the issue of congestion pricing, what type of environmental impact statement is needed. And I think that is going to happen. It will be at least a year before the MTA sees money once it is approved, but that is definitely a, a good step having a former MTA board member and DOT commissioner Polly Trottenberg as the number two person at Department of Transportation certainly bodes well for us here in the New York area. And um, having our one of our senators as the majority leader of the Senate, uh, Senator Schumer has come out very strongly on issues of importance to the MTA and one of the pending uh, bills right now um, gives the MTA a, a very decent amount of money, which we hope will 
certainly subvert any um, service cuts. Um, obviously, we want the capital program to resume so that we can continue making stations accessible. There is a new director of system-wide accessibility now, um, Quimel Arroyo. He is a Washington Heights resident. He is in a wheelchair. Um, he's in a hilly section of the city with very few accessible subway stations. He is now in charge of accessibility issues for both New York City Transit, Long Island Railroad, and Metro North. Um, we might be able to get him as a speaker at some point. Um, it, I'll be very interested to, to hear uh, his, his um, priorities. Um, mask wearing continues pretty well uh, in the 97 to 98% range. Um, obviously, that's not enough to suit some folks. Uh, we would like to see 100%. Apparently, uh, President Biden is asking for uh, real enforcement on all types of public transportation, uh, airlines, Amtrak, ferries, uh, mass transit, for folks to, to be uh, mask compliant. And we hope that there's some enforcement muscle with that decree. Um, if you are intending to to use the Long Island Railroad next weekend, um, you should be aware that as part of the new mainline third track signal work, there will be no train service between Hicksville and New Hyde Park. So if you're going on the South Shore or the Port Washington branch or somewhere else, you'll be okay. Otherwise you're gonna have a heck of a time if you need to use the main line next weekend. Um, as you've all heard, the fare hikes are delayed at least through middle to late summer. If it goes on much longer than that, the public comment period will have to reopen and the, and the fair hike hearings will resume. However, next week, the MTA will, board will vote on toll hikes. Those are going forward. Uh, I will get a briefing uh, on Thursday to see what kind of rates we're talking about, but there are some that are pushing for higher than the normal rates. Um, the Staten Island resident discount on the Verrazano Bridge will be maintained, but it will go up accordingly, obviously. And one piece of very interesting good news is last Thursday, after 30 years of being closed, the Bedford Avenue end of Nostrand Avenue station on the A and C line in Bed-Stuy reopened. It's bright, it's well lit, um, and uh, it now gives Nostrand Avenue a free crossover from one side to the other direction, which means that there is only one express station in the entire subway system now that doesn't have a crossover from one direction to the other, and that's 86th and Lexington. And that's pretty much um, what I have to report as of this time. Okay, well, I guess we can, uh, Ken, are you ready now? Uh, sort of, I just got what um, Mark, uh, was proposing. Well, so, we could do we could do new business in the interim. Is okay. that uh, I understand that there are some new business. Can uh, people raise their hands and can uh, Lisa Orman has her hand raised? I only see one hand raised. Lisa, can you um, you can speak now? I see Jay's hand up as well, but I don't know if it's if that's he just didn't. I thought I put them all down, but Jay, do you have new business as well? I just I just wanted to say something, but let Lisa go first. Okay, Lisa, and then Jay, and that's those are all the hands. Lisa, she said in the chat she needs to be unmuted. Uh, I don't think I can do that. I can't do that. You sec, I'll do it. You can do it, but I'll do it, and I'll show you how to do it in the future. Lisa, you can talk now. Thanks. Did that work? Yeah, yes. Yep. Okay, great. Okay. So um, we were in touch with a lot of the precincts, the 20th and the 24th, um, after the Black Lives Matter protests this summer. Um, and they had informed us that due to safety concerns, they were barricading off the streets. I'm sure you all remember this. Um, Though there was no violence towards officers, they felt it was their right to, to do this. Um, and many of those street barricades have finally been removed. But I wanted to point out that on West 82nd Street, oh, they yes. now have barricades on the sidewalks. And neighbors and visitors on West 82nd Street are forced off the sidewalk and into the street um, because the officers are parking 
perpendicular to the street and backing into the sidewalk. They also have barricades up, so anyone who wants to walk on that south sidewalk in front of the precinct has to be forced into the street, which you can imagine what that looks like after the storms we've received in the last few weeks, or you know, if you're an elderly person with a cane or a wheelchair or a parent pushing a stroller, it's not so easy to navigate. Um, so, you know, I, I don't really uh, think this is wonderful behavior. Um, it's illegal, first of all. Um, and if we are trying to strengthen the respect and trust between the NYPD and the community, this is not great behavior. Um, CB4 sent a letter to their precincts asking them to stop this behavior and it actually worked. Um, I wanted to see if your committee was interested in a similar letter to go out to the 20th precinct to please uh, you know, ask them to stop with this. Um, not only is it illegal, but it is awful for pedestrians. It's very unsafe. Um, it's so forcing pedestrians into the street, uh, Lisa? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, as, as you may have heard, if you've, if you've been on, I think you've been on for most of this meeting, we're gonna be in touch with the 2-0 and the 2-4 um, on, on issues of uh, intersections I'm and sorry, dangerous ones. And so I'm of course, of we are going to uh, mention this, uh, the barricades on 82nd Street to the 2-0 when we speak with them, absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you. Absolutely. Can't force people into the street for no reason. Oh, well, and even if they're, you know, they, they said that there was a reason to be doing this this summer and, and there wasn't. So, um, you know, people should be allowed to pass. For a very short while, they were creating a very narrow area where people could single file go through, um, but then they stopped that for some reason. So now we're back to fully barricaded. It's, okay. it's also important for the police to show they're part of the community and they're integrated into the community and they don't have much to fear and nor should we. So there's, there's a lot more than just uh, pedestrian inconvenience and safety to it. So definitely we will we'll speak to both the uh, 20th and the 20th. Absolutely. Great, thank you. Um, I, I think we're done, but for- I think I'm Jay just... and Doug's hands are up. Okay, Jay and then Doug. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say something that actually has nothing to do with transportation. Uh, I had occasion this afternoon to watch the uh, opening arguments in the impeachment proceeding. And I don't know uh, how many of you may have seen it, but I've been a lawyer uh, and I've tried cases and appealed cases and I've worked in government uh, for over 50 years. And I urge anyone to watch the uh, opening argument, particularly of Jamie Raskin. It is one of the most compelling well done things uh, you will ever see, disturbing. Uh, and I just wanted to bring it to your attention. If you haven't uh, gotten a chance to see it, I'm sure it's on YouTube. Oh, I'm sure it's on, whatever. being replayed everywhere. It, it's something that everybody should see. And if you have children uh, of an age that can appreciate it, they should see it as well. Thank, Thank you, you Jay. Jay. I don't know what, what committee that's for, but uh, we will. <laughs> <laughs> it's for all the committees. Litigation Thank committee. You, yeah. <laughs> um, one more. There's one more hand up. I think it was Doug. Doug. Yes. Doug. Yeah. And, and I, I think I see Richard's hand as well. I, no, I, yeah, this okay. was just something that you said earlier, um, Andrew, uh, regarding not being able to get uh, certain crash data and particularly the direction of traffic or the direction. So, but you used a word called cause and I suspect that may have been the problem because there's a lot of implications with cause there are yeah it could be a a a a number of crashes that occur in a certain direction uh and the vehicle traveling in that direction may not have caused the accident right if somebody went through a red light right but if there's a repeat oh. a repeat at an intersection and it's and it's the same direction of traffic and the same type um then that would tell us something I think yeah, so when we speak to the precincts, I think, I, I, I don't see why. Uh, I won't use the word cause. Yeah, it's right. It's just the fact of, of, of what had occurred and yes. the cause is you know, yet to be determined or litigated. Yeah, I, I, think we, I think the right terminology would be 
if we see a repeated type of accident um, that is paused for examining the intersection further and seeing if the signals play any part in that. Right, and the, la and the other thing regarding uh, the barricade issue, I know that, uh, that Gail Brewer wrote a stern letter uh, a while back uh, asking that the barricades be removed. So uh, oh. we could probably cite, pull that letter up uh, as well, you know, when making the argument. Great. Absolutely. Great. I think um, we're back to Rich. the resolution. Rich is Rich, hands. Rich, Rich, hands. Oh, Rich, sorry, Rich. Um, so two points. One is um, in terms of what Doug and Andrew were just talking about of um, getting better data from the precincts. I had worked really closely with uh, Deputy Inspector Mallon and looked at a number of intersections within the uh, 20th precinct. Um, it, it's not just, I, I agree that there's an issue that the precincts aren't sharing data um, and they're, it's not at the precinct level, it's the headquarters level. Um, it's a bigger issue though, where the data collection is not good and they don't have good access themselves to data. Um, they have individual crash reports, but aggregating that together and being able to make use of it is really difficult. And I think there are systemic changes to the way that data is collected and the way that data is reported um, that are needed. I also think there's some processing of the data that's happening in Albany. Um, I remember being told that we yeah. couldn't get it because it's a needed bigger state issue. approval. It's definitely a really important one that needs to be addressed. Uh, totally separate issue. I put this in chat, but an idea when we have a resolution like uh, the one that Ken's working on right now would be to put it in Google Docs so that committee members, and we could set it up so that one person's editing, uh, committee members could uh, make comments uh, as it's uh, at, on a real-time basis, and we could publish a link to it in chat so that community members could see the resolution real-time. And that way everyone would know exactly what the resolution says and what the resolution um, we're voting on is. So that there's no um, confusion after the fact. Great idea. Great idea. My only thought on that is somebody who's been a board chair before is just making sure there's no confusion with the public when we do disseminate this information and making sure that whatever we send is, uh, you know, something that's going to be shared at the committee meeting and it opens up using a Google Doc opens up a lot of. So again, I, I agree with it in theory, but just think that needs to get. Yeah, I think we'd have to stress that it's a draft, but. Yes. In theory, everything we're, I mean, we're, we're talking about it real time live. It's just, um, no one knows exactly what we're saying. Right. Um, okay, are we ready to get a glimpse of the new resolution? Yeah, um, how do I share my screen? <laughs> um, it should be an Green option button. on, on Bring the your cursor. Bring your cursor down to the bottom of the screen. There should be a green button that says share screen. Ah, oh, yes, there it is. <laughs> on mine, it's on top, but yes. <laughs> Next to the no left turn sign, just so. <laughs> <laughs> the no right on red sign, I think is actually. <laughs> exactly. Can you see that? Yes. 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 Okay. So, I, it seemed to me there wasn't a consensus on Broadway. And, uh, and then I realized that there are really two things on Broadway. There's turns on to Broadway and turns off of Broadway. And I think what um, uh, Andrew was talking about is turns off of Broadway, right. where we want people to stop in the middle of the mall and wait for the, uh, for the green. Um, yes. But then the turn on to Broadway, I think that's the more problematic for pedestrians crossing. I remember vividly many, many times when, remember when we used to have meetings at the uh, community board offices? <laughs> and uh, I used to cross Broadway to go there as I'm sure many people did. And there were many, many times uh, a car would be turning into me um, as I crossed uh, uh, east to west. So um, I think that's, that's the most dangerous thing there. So I would want to keep that in. Um, and I'm also not sure where we ended up on the 10 most dangerous intersections. So see, look at what I did there, see what you think. 
Ken, you, you got to move down a little to see the uh, the bottom part as well. We can only see the top. Okay, that's, can you see the bottom? Yeah, we can see it now. You the whole to, thing? Well, we can only see it in phases. So I, I would let people read this. Okay, and, well, why don't we uh, look, look at work, concentrate on this top part first. Does anyone have a list of the 10 most dangerous intersections? Well, like I said, I, I came up with a list, but it was very ad hoc, just a quick look at Crash Mapper. It's no, by so, no means uh, definitive. Why don't we ask DOT to tell us which ones they think are the most dangerous? I think the, the, the thing is that DOT probably either has or should have this kind of information or, or could get it very quickly. So I don't think it maybe is really our job to come up with a list or-, or Like I said, you know, I, I'd really love to see um, uh, um, West uh, Amsterdam Avenue and 79th Street added to that list. So- Shall we add that in? I would love it if it got yeah. added in, yes. Thank you. I'm going to abbreviate West End Avenue for now. It, it was, well, it wasn't West End. I, I oh, said you said Amsterdam? Amsterdam. Okay, so why don't you make it both of them? Make it both, if you can. If, if people are okay with that. You can, when you edit, you get another avenue. See the good part of that? <laughs> we, we can't actually ban the M79 from turning north or left um, onto Amsterdam, otherwise it can never complete its route. So obviously that bus needs to continue with that turn. Well, yeah, we're not necessarily calling for that. We're just saying, take a look at it. Right, and it could say buses only. You know. yeah, it could, yeah. The only problem with that is that, as you all know, on 79th Street, if you can't turn north, if you're going east on 79th and you come to Amsterdam, Obviously, because of the museum, you still have to go south, um, and then you might put a lot of traffic on a very narrow residential street like 77th Street to come back. So that's a good um, point, which is why all these things really need to be looked at. You really have to consequences, as mm -hmm. I guess it was uh, Mark said. Well, we're getting to that. So. <laughs> I'll make a comment that uh, I think the editing of the word eliminate and the moving possible to practical has alleviated my concerns. I would support this. And I think that Ken has done a good job getting the sentiment of, of other people's concerns. Some of them left off the phone. Those are my thoughts on this specific area. Anybody else on this section before I move down? I'm still concerned about um, making it only onto Broadway and not off of Broadway, especially because one of the huge benefits of this is to reduce congestion. And to the extent that cars would be backed up waiting to make a left turn, I'd be more worried about that happening on Broadway than on side streets turning onto Broadway. So you're worried about cars backing up and congestion? Yeah. That car is wanting to turn left. If you have more than the one car that fits in the mall, uh, you can block a lane of traffic as cars are waiting to make the left turn. And again, this counterintuitive thing that traffic- Rich, that, that would probably only happen at a major street like 79th or, 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 or a 96th. And I think we can get special signal treatment at those major intersections. I don't think you'll see. 10 cars waiting to turn onto 78th Street, for instance. Um, you know, I just think it's the major streets where you might have what you're referring to. Would, uh, would um, how would people feel about just taking, um, saying Broadway intersections, leaving it the way that it was and letting DOT decide? And just one, one response to Andrew is you don't need eight, you just need two. <laughs> Once you have one car in the mall, that second car is gonna block a lane of traffic. Yeah, you can't, just re, you can't just totally eliminate all left turns you can't. off of Broadway. Can I just interject Broadway. something? You can't pay, do it. I, I've said this a million times. We pay very high taxes for people who have studied this more than presumably anyone who is on this call right now. 
to come up with good solutions for this. I think we should just tell them what we want to have happen and let them figure out that's their job exactly how to implement it. So I think the general language works best. Agree. So general would be getting rid of this. Yeah. I would just keep it general. All right. Yeah, I was just going to jump in because, you know, Ken, you said this is not a ban on left turns, and I was just going to agree to just remove that part. Um, in addition, there's another part that's underneath uh, that line where it says eliminate left turns as well. I think if, if, we, if we go into that path of eliminating left turns, we're just going to confuse New Yorkers and how to drive in our neighborhood. The only people who I know who drive with GPS or like Waze or any of these apps are taxi drivers. And, and if you just change the streets the next day, we're going to see a lot of accidents happen, I think, in the interim. Um, so for me, I, I'm going to still hold true to what I said earlier, where the, la the, the period should be where it reads, uh, you know, in our district, period. I'm sorry, in our district and Broadway, period. Broadway intersections. I don't think then, we can have verbiage that talks specifically about left turns because the rest of the the rest of the re resolution comes up with solutions such as uh, split signals. I'm sorry if I'm misreading this. Split phase signals and signage to completely eliminate red, red, uh, left turns, which you said this is not what it's designed to do, is not fair to everyone who uses the street. I think so. I would be completely on board with this solution if where your cursor is right now actually goes over to the end of intersection and just hits period and the rest of that sentence. Yeah, so <laughs> where it says all Broadway intersections, period, the rest following would just be removed. I'd be on board with this resolution. Well, then we'd be removing the most, in terms of safety, the most valuable tools that the but you said this isn't a ban on left turns. So no, if it isn't a ban on left turns, then that part should be removed. No, well, well, we're asking them to what consider the that at any particular intersection. Right. Okay, so let's roll down a little. Open to which, which, the DOT to determine best solutions. And if they propose left turns ban, then that is upon them to give to us. But I don't think the verbiage should include it. That's going to, that's going to just. You know, we have so you have you have done a great job offering solutions. I don't think the left turn ban is a, that's a very specific solution that 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 I don't think would work would honestly work. Well, it's worked. It's working already in hundreds of intersections. Right, but you said you well, said this resolution is not a ban on left turns. If we go back to what you've said earlier, well, we're not, I think it should be removed based on what you've said. It's just, okay. it's just a point of information here. It's definitely the words in front of me, the ones I see on my screen right now, do not call for a ban on left hand. To restrict left hands, left turns, or install more no, more they, no left turns. No left, no left turns turn is the issue. not left the turning. Not my, my Therefore, to not do parking. it, to ban. Well, no, for one that's thing, not what it says. There's two different. It says where, where it's one at a time, please. Yeah, where it's where practicable. So this is a compromise language. It may not be perfect, but at least it tees up the issue that motivated this whole resolution. If we take out anything about left hand turns. It's really, in my opinion, it's really not clear what the, what the point of this resolution is. So I think this is, a, I, I, in my opinion, this is a good compromise to say we have a problem with left-hand turns. These are potential solutions, but you, the experts for whom we pay a lot of money in taxes, figure out how to best do it for the benefit of all you street users. That's what I think this says now. Ken, can you scroll down a little bit, please? Yeah. So I can see that. Do you have the thing about Broadway, right? Yes. Let, take that's, a look. That, that's what, great. That's tell great. Me, tell me what you think of that. Is that all right? Wait for green before proceeding. Absolutely. Should that say at intersections where left turns are still permitted? Okay. It's implicit. It's implicit, of course. Yeah. No, it's not. I, may, it's I believe Meg's hand was up. On one paragraph, you're asking them specifically, if you go back up to either restrict or put no left turn signs. You're, you're, you're asking for one or both of two choices 
and then you're going down and saying, wait for the green. There, I, I agree 100% with Howard. If you're gonna have the DOT where the expertise resides, make the decisions, all we should be saying is take a look at the dangerous left turn intersections and decide the best way to come up with the safest solution and not dictate or implicitly dictate the fact that we're somehow uh, indirectly saying prohibit left turns, restrict left turns. A no to me saying restrict the left turn or install no left turn signs is prohibiting left turns in a, in a blanket manner. And I think we've gotten away from what, what we were all of, or some of us were objecting to in the first place with the broad strokes of this thing, banning left turn. And if you think about it, you can't just ban all left turns going north or south on Broadway. Well, we're only saying we're practicable. And it's, so it's up to them. Yeah, yep. well, yeah, I, 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 I agree with William. I, 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 when, you, when you start to say eliminate or restrict, re, excuse me, not eliminate, restrict left turns or install more now left turn signs whenever practical, that to me is saying do one or the other at every intersection, whether you put the word practicable in or not. So I, we have, I a, we have I, two, two, we have form, two committee I people, can't... Barbara and Meg, who would like to speak. I haven't spoken yet. Can I go? Go ahead, yes. Meg. Thanks. Um, I think Ken did a good job editing the top part that's partially on the screen right now. I think he addressed some of the concerns like taking the suggestion that Christian had around wording about signage instead of the word eliminate. I think Ken did a good job editing. I do think that removing some of the left turns is one of the options that would be available to them in addition to other restrictions or improvements. And so I, I don't read this here as calling for a ban on all. It does say where practicable, he added that in. Obviously, DOT is going to determine what it thinks is appropriate for that. You know, if if it would add comfort, perhaps whenever practicable, as determined by DOT, to make that even more explicit. But I do think that is already explicit, frankly. So I appreciate Ken's edits, and I also agree. don't think can while change this. can be hard, yeah, we can agree to disagree. While change can be hard. I don't think requesting changes that are overall a benefit to public safety, I don't think the fact that change is hard or might take getting used to is a good reason to be against something like that. Thanks. Thank you. Barbara? Um, I agree with Jay. And um, I think this is too harsh sounding. Uh, and the other thing is that um, I think that the wording that you have for the Broadway malls is just too wordy. And I, I think that stop here on red makes more sense. It's just shorter and gets more to the point than wait for green before proceeding. You can't have that at every mall. Is that okay, Andrew? Yeah, stop here on red works. I think DOT has language uh, that they use. Yeah, they'll use what they use at Park Avenue if, if they'll do it. Whatever language they use is what they'd be using. We're not going to dictate road signs. Yeah, of but course. whereas I agree that some no, no left some some left turns are dangerous. I think you can soften what you have said because I agree with Jay that it sounds like do one or the other in these instances, and we're talking about every left turn in our district, and that's a little cuckoo. Okay, how about um, and then there's Mark's. Um, addition at the end. Uh, Doug, wanted to speak? Yeah, and if you could scroll back up. Uh, this is maybe splitting hair, so please forgive me, but, and it may be semantics, but under um, install no left turn signs, obviously it could be signs or signals. It could be electronic. It may not be a perfect a painted sign, but also- yeah, it could be a, a left red arrow. Yeah. Right. But the other question is, is we're using the word whenever, and I don't know if this is, it may be irrelevant, but we were talking earlier in the meeting about, you know, and, and it, I, I realize it can be confusing um, and that's, that weighs heavily on me, but 
is it whenever or wherever? I mean, we're talking, right? We're talking about the location. I was wondering that too. I think it should be where, wherever. Okay, All right. that's those are my only. That's better. And I'm supposed to be an editor. Uh, I think we got everyone's who had their hand raised. So I think we've discussed this quite some time. Everyone's formed an opinion. Um, and I, I would, if, uh, unless there's an objection, I'd like to call the question. You're now willing to tone down that, that last sentence in the first paragraph? It's Ken's call. I, I, I'm just. I mean, one Ken's thing that, that Ken could do is if he puts in, um, it maybe saves this version, but um, includes the version that um, has the final version so that we don't have to read through all the track changes. So we can look through it one last time. I think that would be easier for people you to be able to call the question to vote on it. Hey, Ken. Yeah. Um, if you want to make that word wherever, you have it where never right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. The N is crossed out. Because I think yeah, we're, we're like ninety percent there on this. It's just like you, instead of the, if you don't want to accept all changes, you can have it show just. Right. What would be the final version if you? Yeah, show them yeah. in the yeah. markup. Instead of going to all markup, go to. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Hey, uh, where am I going? Where it says left. all markup, change okay. that. Yeah. To, um, so it's just to the left of where you are now and up uh, a little bit. And yeah. it says all markup, click a drop down. And yeah, then say, drop down. say no, no markup. markup. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Thank you. Wow. Yay. So now it looks like a clean version that we can all quickly read through. If there are how any about, final. How about replacing the word restrict with control? Well, restrict the, is control there. Control the intersections in the safest way possible. Well, Jay, um, I use restrict because that's DOT's term of art. They, they refer to that as one of their possible treatment tools in their Fine. tool. So if they think it's if, if they think that's the safest thing to do, then they'll do it. Yeah, but so that's I think what we want, important. Ken, isn't that what we want them to do is to look at the intersections and decide the safest way to control those intersections? Isn't that what we're asking them? And as Howard said, they have the expertise. So why don't we just say so? Um, well, I, I think we should point out uh, in case they don't know or remind them what are the most uh, what are the most effective treatments in their toolbox. So you disagree and why that, you say that, that? The, uh, why that, that that's that? us foisting our non-expertise on DOT. We so want them to control, we want them to look at these intersections. I have, I have we agree can, wait, can I just interject something? Control the DOT controls all intersections, period. That's the existing situation. We're asking them to take one more step to do something that might restrict. So I don't think control gets at it because that is the situation ever since they installed traffic lights, they control the intersections. I don't think that's the right word. I think restrict works. Well, again, you, I, I see it as an inconsistency, Howard. When you're saying that they're the experts, they should decide, but you're telling them what they should do. Which Not is specifically, no, we're telling them we want them to do. It. No, I, I, I firmly believe that I should defer them on the specifics, but we're, we have to call attention to what we want them to do. They have been controlling intersections literally since the 1920s. All intersections have been controlled by them. We're asking them to do something other than what they've done for the past 100 years. And that is to consider restricting in some way some of these left-hand turns. I think that language is very is, is very clear, but it doesn't tell them exactly how to do that. It draws their attention to what we what we need them to do. May I say something? Sure. What if you just leave out make make it this way? The last sentence to restrict left turns where practicable practicable for safety reasons and leave it up to DOT to make that determination. You don't think they know about no left turn signals? If they feel that's appropriate, then that is what they will do or certainly suggest to us. But I don't think we need to put words into their mouths. Ken? Well, we, we, we often, uh, you know, our, our daylighting uh, 
resolution, we we said we think you need to well, do more daylight. Well, we don't have hard, then I'm going to abstain on this because I don't agree with that. It's the more I look at it, the more it bothers me. I think we could just say to restrict left turns um, where practicable for safety reasons, which we don't mention at all. We don't tell them really why we want this. So, uh, well, the where I think the where as makes it pretty clear that this is about safety. Oh. Um, we could add for safety re reason for reasons of safety. We could. I, you I'd could, be fine you with could that. take out the word restrict and put in regulate. Wow. wow. No, restrict is. Like I said, it's it's it has. Yeah, this, I know, Ken. <laughs> it's what you want. I understand. No, it's what, it's what DOT is. We could sit. We could stay here all night trying. I, in my opinion, I think that's, restrict that's, captures what Ken's intent is. Controlling or regulating again. That's what they've been doing for the past hundred years. That doesn't say anything. Oh, I think oh. that word, whether you like it or not, it does capture the intent of what Ken's resolution is trying to accomplish. So if you don't think it's good, you could vote against it, but. That's the word that That's captures first. the essence of it. Okay. That said, I, I don't have any problem adding Barbara's suggested language for safety reasons. So Ken might object to this, but I have what might be a compromise in, in thinking that DOT is not going to get this resolution ban left turns the next day. They're going to investigate, figure out what makes sense. So what would you think of? before the words to restrict left turns to say to explore restricting left turns. So that incorporates Jay and Barbara's concern that you know, we wanna make sure that we're getting their expertise. It's not a direct call for it, but it's, it's saying they should look into it, use their expertise and see what makes sense. I'm, I'm okay. To explore possibly restricting left it. turns. Excuse me, so why not just call for a study the way we always do? I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> confused. I'm with Barbara, I'm gonna abstain on this. I'm not on the committee, but just wanna say, I think you should just ask for a study. Thank you. Well, but, but, you know, I'm, I'm willing to put that in if it would help get some votes, but if it's not gonna get any votes, why am I doing it? I, I, I also wanna jump in and just say that the challenge here, because like, so I, I, I agree that left turns are, very, very dangerous, right? I mean, that's undeniable. We have fact, we have data. Okay, period. But I disagree with the fact that we have to remove it completely. You just can't, right? It goes back to the idea of removing oxygen because fire is dangerous. You, you just can't you just can't do that. Um, so why, why, why can't we have a resolution that calls for the DOT to come up with a new way to make left turns safer? rather than removing completely. If it's safer, then we get what we want. We get pedestrians and cyclists, uh, you know, not dying in the streets. And we have the ability to keep our ecosystem, keep our economy and keep the roads running more smoothly rather than creating congestion. So if we can, I, I'm, you know, I'm trying to quickly read this here, uh, 50%. No, I just want to er remind you, that's not what it says. So read it carefully. I'm suggesting that it should say to make left turns safer because removing left turns completely is not practical. It doesn't say, it doesn't say to completely remove left turns. I, I suggest you read the language that's on the screen. It's, it's, people are interpreting it that way. Therefore, the language should be changed so that it, the interpretation is not there anymore. The language is the language. So then change Any it because the in interpretation is there. It's not that difficult to change it. So Will, I, I'd be curious, and I'm playing with this myself when I'm driving, if you were convinced that it's quicker to make three right turns than a left turn, because you don't get stuck in traffic as much, that just traffic flows better, would you still say it's impossible to do that? And for me, like the idea that I'd make three right turns instead of one left feels wrong. But if, if we knew, and it seems like the studies show that it is quicker, then would you feel the same way? Not if you're missing all three lights, it isn't. Yeah, it, it's, it's as someone who has turned left going north on, on Broadway to go to West End, to go another block with a traffic light, another right turn, Amsterdam goes north, so you'd have to go to Columbus. That's another two lights, another light to turn right 
to come back on 90th Street, for example, it, there's no way on earth that it's shorter. I'm afraid people will speed to make up for that. Yeah, I mean, there's no way on earth that it's shorter. I mean, it's 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 been having this conversation for over an hour, that's not, it doesn't say <laughs> to make three, go around the block the whole time. The words are up on the screen. I think we should vote at this point. Again, let me emphasize, based upon the words that are actually on the screen. In other words, uh, I will just read to explore, to explore, that's the new language, restricting left turns or installing more no left turn signs or signals wherever practicable for reasons of safety. We're voting on those words, not any other words. Okay, I'm calling the question. <laughs> Unless I hear violent objections. Can we, uh, can I stop sharing my screen so I can see everybody? Yes, yes. And Julian has had his hand up for a long Just time. Make sure you yeah, Julian, it. Julian is uh, okay. waiting. Julian, make sure one you more. Save this version. So that I'm we all glad that it. we're voting and I'm not going to talk because I just want to okay. so I can go do my homework. Okay. <laughs> um, all those in favor of the resolution can you, as can you remove can we clear the screen? How yeah. to clear the screen so some people can hand, raise their hand. How, how, uh, how do I do it? Uh, at, the the top of, at the top of your screen, there should be a green thing that says screen share, and then there should be a red button that says end screen share. Take a look for that. Uh, let's see, new share. Um, it should be a red button that says stop sharing. Stop share. Okay. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Are we ready to vote? Okay. Are we going to vote hand, hand vote or? Um, however, hand or? Electronic. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't have the button, so I'm going to raise my hand. All those in favor? This is committee, committee members. members. Committee okay. members, all those in favor? Um, I'll give you the, I'll give you the, the digital. There's six digital hands, Meg, Elizabeth, Sarah, Julian, Doug, Andrew. And we have me, Ken, and any other physical hands? Okay, so that's eight, Mark, uh, Steve? Uh, yeah, if, if, if there was six digital, two physical, that's eight in favor. <laughs> um, all those opposed? I don't see any. Um, how many digital? There's four digital. Okay. Elizabeth, uh, yeah, yeah, no. Elizabeth and Meg, are you opposed or do you need to lower your hands? Yeah, okay. Got it. So there's there's two. Okay. Um, anyone abstaining on the committee or for cause? I believe Barbara just raised her and Jay, I'm gonna lower your hand just so you know. So what's the final vote, Steve? Jay, I'm just clarifying. You you voted no, not abstaining, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So one abstaining for committee members. Okay. What's the total vote for the committee? I believe it's eight two one. Yeah. Eight two one. Thank you. Okay. Non committee members. All those in favor, please either raise your hand electronically or raise your hand physically. Rich, Steve, anyone else? Mark. 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 So that's three. Um, thank you. All those opposed? You see the electronic hand, Steve. I don't. Um, and anyone abstaining or for cause? Wait. Rich, you didn't vote opposed, did you? I voted in favor. Okay, I voted in favor. Stop. Sorry. Okay. Voted in favor. We're now voting against. Susan, I, just because we said it. Susan, are you against or are you abstaining? Abstaining. So there is no against in non-committee and there's one abstaining in non-committee. I think that's it. Okay, it was a long it. There was a long discussion, but I think we got a better resolution as a result. So thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, Ken. I Any... just want to say with a little flexibility, you could have gotten my vote. And I think that's probably true for some of the others as well. Ditto. So, I mean, after such a long discussion and, you know, there was no reason to leave that in, in my opinion. Um, I think everyone has made their point on this and uh, thanks to everybody for doing this and sticking with us. And I think that's the agenda. Unless... That's it. Okay, bye. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Have a thanks, good night. Everybody.